Welcome to the tutorial. If you're here to learn something, you're in the wrong place. Or the right one if you came to learn how stupidity works. Yeah, that that does tend you grabbed to... grabbed your keyblade because we're going to... <laughs> I, I don't know what I was doing with that intro. Be grateful he just saved you from an insult, Ringo. <laughs> I don't give a damn. My skull is still visible. <laughs> <laughs> You have to remember, we don't record the visuals for this, so they can't yeah, see that. Yeah, that's not going to make sense to anyone who's listening. <laughs> <laughs> I gotta, right. find, I gotta um, find a way to, like, overlay these three see, boxes on... Uh... I was going to say, like, I, I was going to say, these three boxes actually look reasonable enough that if we sat here like this, the video would be yeah, good, I gotta, I think. Yeah, I gotta find a way it to overlay okay. them on the on the OBS readout, but I'll... I'll... All they get is the tutorial logo just sitting there and just our audio. Honestly, not that great, I would say. Anyway, today we're talking about Kingdom Hearts, the most confusing series to ever exist. More like Kingdom Hurts. <laughs> yeah, we did touch Kingdom on this a little fun. bit, I think, in the episode about our favorite video games. Um, and possibly in the Final Fantasy yeah, one, I don't but remember. But we to only touched on it, it was briefly. Not my favorite video game. No, it's one of Dave's. One of. It is not the bestest, most favorite, no. But yeah, Kingdom Hearts is one of those series where they say, if you want the lore, you gotta play all 20 of our games, including the mobile one. Which so, is, for some reason, canon. Which yeah. I, should not I hate the fact that the lo the mobile one is canon. That bothers me so much. Thumb and not only is it canon... Not only is it canon, it takes place on the earliest point in the timeline. So if you want to know how shit got fucked up, you have to play that one. <laughs> oh, goodness. I know how shit got <laughs> fucked up. Japan tried to write a story. No, no, no. Japan writes good stories. This was... No. No, this was, oh, this was a I, Japanese... I agree. I agree. This, was, with, uh, this was a Japanese story writer. This is a Japanese story writer and an American story writer fucked in an elevator in Kingdom Hearts Happened. More or less, yeah. In an elevator? Why yeah. an elevator? Was it was the elevator rapidly crashing to the ground? <laughs> uh, uh, it is now. A lot like the story, yes. <laughs> yeah, great. Wow, um, another Psyduck. Yeah, also Dave and Ringo are just playing Pokemon Go right now, even though we're recording an episode. Actually not playing Pokemon Go right now. Uh -huh. It's just me. So uh, I kind of assumed that Beard would have something he wanted to talk about before I got oh, involved with oh. it. Oh, you assumed that I would have something to say about Kingdom Hearts, the game that of which you've played every entry in the series and know everything, and I've not, only played I the first not, two? I have not. I no, have I, played. I don't think I have anywhere near as much to say about this as you do. <coughs> oh, fuck. Okay, I have played Kingdom Hearts 1, Kingdom Hearts 2, Kingdom Hearts Chain of Memories, Kingdom Hearts RE Chain of Memories, uh, Kingdom Hearts 3, I did not play Dream Drop Distance because I still don't own it and I can't find it anywhere. Uh, cause it's garbage. Well, that's not true. Some people will say it's good. Actually, that's not true either. I actually do have Dream Drop Distance, and I played like an hour of it, and that's it. I I just have never gone back to it because I didn't really like it much. Um, I never played Birth by Sleep, but I do have it. Um, yeah, bro. I think that's another one I played like an hour of. I went, uh, I don't like this. Uh, you know, the more I'm thinking about it, the more I think I maybe did actually play every title. I think fucking loser. I think so. I think you've played every single one. Uh, it, that'd be fair. The ones I haven't completed, I have gone and watched playthroughs of because I wanted to know what the fuck the story was. Back, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Back in the day. That's a long ass time ago. Yeah. Yeah. It's it's kind of yeah, like how I'm kind of like so how, it's like over a decade ago. Probably like, like how Shrek is a decade old and people don't realize that. I mean, I realize it because I'm old. But that's <laughs> actually he's, he's like 30 I, I don't think Ringo wanted me to say this out loud, but he's demanding that Dave accept his gift on Pokemon Go. Wait, hold on. He did not say that. He, he said, he said, he said, he said Dave, exalt my Dave, gift. My gift. Shut up, bitch. Did you know how long Shut it takes for Pokemon Go to load? I'm not putting it back up. Why did you close it? You fucking lose it. Because. I had shit to do. I was because, just play Pokemon because all he's day. in the middle of recording a show, ho. <laughs> no kidding. I don't care. I'm I'll fucking, get around your your Pokemon. It's <laughs> fucking Kingdom Pokemon Hearts, Goblet. dude. Yes. Wanna, <laughs> it's just gonna be him talking. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I he is really, the one talking. I, so why would we want him to open up Pokemon Go and get distracted? You fucking weeb. Oh my god! Fuck you. 
my my question in that regard I'm gonna go is... play Super Crate Box. <laughs> Yeah, I feel like you guys played at least a little bit of some of the games. You should put some. I played Chain I, of Memories. I played one and you two in Chain some, of Memories. Um, input into it. So, so the first thing to know about Kingdom Hearts is that Kingdom Hearts was meant to just be one game. It was not meant to be a massive series that it became. They did not think that there would be enough fan that, that there would be enough fans of this amalgamation of Disney and Final Fantasy. So they kind of made their own little self-contained story which they and released in the early 2000s taken. upon a wave of edgy teenagers that is true <laughs> that is true and it became Peter, the hot topic of itself, hot topic it's not it's not bad uh because it wasn't designed to have other stuff added to it uh and then of course because they released uh, a really emotional game in the midst of the super duper emo movement um god. it blew the fuck the up fucking, the fucking scene phase oh god <laughs> Oh, what phase? The fucking scene phase. Oh, yeah. 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 That, yeah. Right yeah, in the middle oh, of all yeah. that. that. Like peak panic at the disco, uh, Green Day <laughs> fucking Lincoln bullet Park. for my Where Valentine. Are you? Yeah. 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 It was right in the middle of all that. <laughs> Jeez. That was the yep. era of Kingdom Hearts. That. Wow. That explains... <laughs> to the point, a lot of that music, which has nothing to do with Kingdom Hearts, ended up getting super associated super, with Kingdom yeah. Hearts. Like, it also if you can look all up the really, really Lincoln awful Park fan AMV, fiction. You will find... <laughs> You will find... Yeah, there's a lot of awful fan fiction. If you look at like, Linkin Park AMV, uh, you will find a whole bunch of Kingdom Hearts ones. For no particular reason. Other than so, that, it was the time for Lincoln it. Park also showed up at the same time during the scene wave. So. Yeah. So what ends up happening is you have this, this, this story that's very heavy on like hearts and light and darkness and figuring out who you really are in the world. His and everyone has fucking, been consumed by darkness. And, and everyone fucking loved it. So sales went through the roof and Disney and Square Enix are looking at this going, uh, that wasn't in the plan. <laughs> wow, explosive growth and of money. Holy made, shit. And then they made I mean, 25 more. <laughs> I mean, to be fair, they probably weren't unhappy with it. They were just like, um, here, no, we'll make this a Game they're Boy corporate, version. They're corporate game entities. Why would they ever be unhappy with that? They're just like, oh shit, I didn't expect just, this to suddenly make me money. Say, let's yeah, do exactly. more of that. They, they, were like, they were like, this wasn't in the plan, but since it's working, let's make more. And initially, they put out a Game Boy title called Chain of Memories, which didn't work anything like the original game because they had to make it work for Game Boy. And they were like, here, we'll just throw this system. in here. <laughs> They're like, and here's it's basically a card just system. rehashing the first game, but on Game Boy. Only um, you had, only they added new enemies. Uh, and also, uh, you could play as Edgy McEdgerson. Yeah, Edgy McEdgerson That's himself, true. Mr. Raku. Uh, if you guys, if you look at the original Chain of Memories, it's really apparent how they were like um, trying to just what's the word I'm looking for? How they were trying to like maintain their grip on the magic that made that happen in the first place. They took some like ideas that people had like there were people who were like oh i want to know more about riku because he's edgy like me and <laughs> i'm not joking i wish yeah, i was joking they're like they're like oh you want to know more about riku he can walk upside down on the stairs <laughs> right <laughs> y'all know That's what i'm talking cool. about yeah. <laughs> let's be honest if you were around in the early 2000s you know what we're talking about it was everywhere um so <laughs> it was everywhere after that what happens is it wasn't enough people were still like more give me more and they um, needed more doctor then, then they were like, like all right how can we just here. majorly fuck this shit up and then kingdom hearts 2 was released they put out kingdom hearts 2 which i think they had good intentions with but oh boy, did they just completely derail everything they, they, they set They just up in sat in a room. They were in a writer's room and they were like, fucking pitch me ideas for a, more of this story. And fucking every idea made it in. <laughs> All of them at the same time. No, no, that's not true. Square Enix was smart enough not to do what Sega did. And they denied the werewolf idea. <laughs> 
I'll give you that one. There was no werewolf Sora. <laughs> there was lion cub Sora, uh, though, which was considerably more adorable. Yes. Uh, so it was lion club. Yeah, so you, know, you, know, you, know, you know what? You know what? If I can go off on Sega for a second. You know what? You, you, you know They could have actually We're pulled off. They actually could have pulled off werewolf Sora, though. They fucking could have done it, and it would have made more fucking sense than, I don't know, Sonic's a fucking werewolf now. Why not? They could have made okay. They could have made Werewolf Sonic make more sense. They're just on fucking crack at Sega. <laughs> yeah, just like. All right, what's the next Sega? What's the next Sonic game? <laughs> yeah, I was listening to someone online the other day who had to stop in the middle of his like dissertation on Sonic to be like, um, what was it? Uh, he's like, I'm sorry. It's just at what point at the Sega studios were they like? Let's make him a werewolf. Why was that the idea everyone thought was good? You, you want to know what it was? You want to know what it was? They made Werehog right around the time Twilight was getting really big. That That's true. They're like, what's popular right now? Uh, fucking werewolves. Fucking yeah. vampire werewolf stories. They're that's like, what we're yeah, going to do. I, make I him a let's, werewolf. Let's make okay, him a werewolf. Enough tangenting. Back to the, back to the thing at, at hand. Um... Fuck werewolf so he, Sonic. Instead of instead of Sora getting a werewolf form, instead he got a really twitchy, creepy ass darkness form instead. Oh yeah. Um, mm-hmm. And 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 because it was dark and edgy, everyone loved it. Also well, because it fucking it. rocked and it killed everything. <laughs> yeah, I was gonna say that's not why I loved it. I loved it because you go you go drive form, you suddenly turn into the shadow monster. You're like, what? You're like, what and the you hell? Just and murder it's like, everything it's so like, effectively. I was yeah. like. Oh, this is great! I like, like this! It's like, hey, I bet you weren't expecting this. By the way, your damage it's has like, gone oh up by god. like 800%. It's like, oh my god, <laughs> actually, your good defense game mechanics. Is nothing. Yeah, your, your defense, defense is nothing. Is nothing but that doesn't nothing matter when there's nothing to hit yeah, you. <laughs> nothing will get close enough to hit you, so... The only yeah. time I ever got mad about being turned into anti-Sora was in the middle of the boss fight with the dude... I think it's Zaldin. The dude who, like uses wind and, and throws spears at you from halfway across the map or from floating literally where you can't hit him. Yeah. And when you're anti Sora, you can't do yeah, anything no, about that's, that. That's when you, you really do him. need wisdom form. Yeah. So that's what I was going for was like, let's turn into wisdom form. Ah, uh, come on, the one time you're useless. <laughs> yep, then you just gotta wait for it to run out and be like, Well, guess it's Thundaga again. Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> thunder, thunder, thunder. Oh man, the voice acting for that game. <laughs> dance, water, dance. <laughs> oh Sora. my god, don't even. <laughs> Sora. Riku. <laughs> His heart is okay. consumed by darkness. But Ansem's voice acting. Donald, like the, Goofy. The, the only, like, full blown <laughs> professional dude. Goofy. <laughs> Goofy, my boy. Goofy, That's you must protect this answer. boy. <laughs> No, that that was Christopher Lee. Is <laughs> yeah, who that yeah was. no. Yeah, Christopher Lee was Ansem. Yeah. Yeah. Why I mean, did he agree to doing yeah, that? Jensen just looked like Funny. he was on drugs constantly. Like he was high yeah. off his ass. He has his, his <laughs> hands in like a triangle shape, and then like his <laughs> eyes are just constantly yeah. pointed yeah, like, all the way open. His, his eyes are <laughs> bolted open. He has like bulging eyes and then like pinpoint pupils. <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm sorry. And he's just like, and he's just like, when, when someone loses their heart, they leave behind nobody. <laughs> like, okay. And it's just like, who the fuck is this guy? I taught Mickey. <laughs> and like, oh, okay. Uh, I mean, there's a story to Kingdom Hearts, but I really don't want to try to explain it. Um, so Kingdom Hearts you, You're going to have to try. Because okay, we've fine. only been going for 16 minutes, so... God damn it. Are you it. talking about Ansem the Wise? Or Ansem the, the Wise. <laughs> no, yes, Ansem not Ansem the, the Dark. Not Ansem, Ansem the Wise. Seeker of Darkness. You're talking about Ansem the Wise. <laughs> talking about actual Ansem, Ansem. Which Why we'll are there three minute, I guess. different Ansems? There's... <laughs> It's it's just like how there's so many Xehanort and Xemnas. They're all the same person, except for so Christopher long, Lee. long, long ago. <laughs> all the world was one world. Destiny And then this douchebag in a black coat called the Master of Masters showed up. 
and had five, no, my bad, six pupil, pupils. <laughs> we just don't give a fuck about number six because he just doesn't enter the story for, with any real purpose for like eight more games. So uh, basically this master of masters was able to see the future and he wrote a prophecy of all his prophetic uh, visions of the future. One day and, uh, the boy saw <laughs> One day, a boy, and, a dog, and a And duck. in the not too different distant future, there's a horrible war that's gonna happen and fucking tons of people are gonna die and the world's gonna get shattered into a billion pieces and everyone's like, What? No, we don't want that and so um, In the, in the not too distant future, the fucking apocalypse. Wow. Uh oh my so, God. His other five students, basically, they have their masters themselves, which is why he's called the Master of Masters, because they never gave him a fucking name. But I bet you he's another Xehanort, because that's what everything is right now. Um, also, the ending of Kingdom Hearts 3 did not wrap up anything. Oh, you thought Kingdom Hearts um, 3 was going to tie off the story? <laughs> why? The thing, they said it would be the end of the Xehanort arc, and I was like, okay, it's the end of the arc. <laughs> It has to actually finish a story. Oh, oh my god! They're just gonna turn it into one piece. The, <laughs> right? the story will never end. Ne next, it's gonna be like next, it's gonna be like uh, Hitman Three: Kingdom Hearts. <laughs> oh my god, dude! So as anyway, long as we're going uh, into Squeenix series. To to be clear, I'm really unclear on this early part. What I do know is this: um, the Master of Master has five pupils. Each of the five pupils runs a union. Yeah, that's what they call them. A union. So, I mean, they, they I guess, strike <laughs> out against hey, man. labor shortages. They, they, got, and they gotta get their benefits and insurance somehow. I mean... Um, so, anyway, <laughs> each of these unions has, like, a, an official know, thing they're supposed to do. And then the, the Master of Masters gives, gives each union leader a secret Look. job that they're supposed to do that they're not supposed to tell anyone that's that they're right. doing. Um... <laughs> I'm sorry. And then I'm sorry. I, I'm sorry. He he, <laughs> he basically there's five factions and he's like, I'm all going to give you a secret spy mission that you cannot tell the other five factions about. Like that's not gonna just cause absolute fucking turmoil between all of them. What a fucking um, bitch. On what I have seen, the Masters of Masters the way he gets his power is, ah. uh, you know, have you guys seen the the Xehanort Keyblade that has like an eye in the middle of it? Nope. No. No. Why would I have seen that? I'm gonna find you a picture so you can see. But uh, hopefully, our audience knows what I'm talking about. So essentially, what I'm he did was he took an eye. Um, <laughs> no, I mean a lot of people like Kingdom Hearts, dude. <laughs> oh, um, do you mean like Xehanort five? Keyblade? It's called the Gazing Eye. That's the name of it. So he has an eye in the Keyblade. And you can see it's like at the tip of the Keyblade. Um, so what's up with that is by putting his eye there, that Keyblade moves forward into the future. And wherever it ends up in the future, the Master of Masters can see everything the Keyblade sees. Um, so oh that's how he knows the future. I'm gonna see what if this is in, works. What real is quick. what is Don't mind what me. is I'm definitely live, I'm live <clears throat> Go on. What's definitely insinuated is he sees the future, and I am am unclear if he's evil about this or not. It might very well be a case of this is the timeline, and even if I don't like it, I don't like the idea of fucking with the timeline because that'll make things even worse. So I have to ensure that the timeline goes as it's supposed to, which is why he gives them the secret chores and all that garbage because okay here we go i don't know if this will come out on the I'll, I'll see this later in editing but i put a picture of the fucking seeing eye keyblade on the uh well, i definitely don't see it no in, no because you, you, you can't see it it's on obs all right uh but here, anyway yeah so he sends it, it into is. the future he sends it into the go. future well that so just so we're clear that's what that's what dude number six job is, is here, take this box that we still haven't told you what's inside of it and uh, take this keyblade and just pass it down to someone else and they'll pass it down to someone else. And this keyblade has to keep getting passed down so I can keep seeing the future so that I can keep telling people in the past what's going to happen in the future. And apparently that works really well 
Uh, he because there's a cutscene where he's talking to this guy and he's like, "Well, hold on, he, hold on." He, <laughs> how, what the fuck? How does that work? <laughs> how can you? Yeah. Tiny, whiny, wibbly, wobbly. You you pass down the keyblade to somebody else, and it goes to the next person and the next person as time continues forward. But and the only way that you'd be able to see in the future in that case is if your past is concurrently happening at the same time as the future. What the fuck? Hold on. That makes no sense. Hold on. So what he was he what he did was he cast a spell on the eye. So that essentially what it is, he gives it to his student. His student goes onward and lives his life, becomes a master, has a student, passes it down to his student, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Now, that happens, and that timeline moves forward. But because of the spell he cast, or the, the magic he's using with that eye and the keyblade, he can see right now everything that already, everything that happens in the future with that pass down. Because magic is bullshit, okay. Because magic is bullshit, yes. So when he gives the keyblade to Lucian, his final, um, or his final dude, <laughs> because edgy, um, that's a name I haven't he, heard in this series yet. Yeah. So uh, he, he gives it to him and he basically says, congratulations, you already succeeded. And I, and I know you already succeeded because I can already see all the things that happened. And I'm again, I'm unclear on whether the Master of Masters is evil or if he's very purposely just making sure he doesn't fuck up the timeline that he knows is going to happen because messing with time always has bad consequences. Um, but essentially, here's the other thing I don't understand, because at the end of Union Cross, which is the mobile game that tells you the story of all this garbage, um, the leaders of the groups all get together because they're all like suspicious of each other, like they're playing Among Us or some shit. Who, and, killed, uh, who killed them? They finally all get together and tell each other what all their secret things were. And then they're like, uh-oh, okay, I guess we're just chill then. Okay, so and just like the war normal happens stuff anyway. then? And somehow the war happens anyway. Uh, so I don't know how that happens. <laughs> Suddenly, war. To be, fair, to be fair, I started playing Union Cross, much like other games I've mentioned. And then uh, I got to the end of season one of Union Cross. Yes, that's a thing. And then um, by the time I was interested in doing Union Cross again at all, I just didn't care enough to download it on a new phone. I don't know. Probably somebody lost to somebody on Xbox and got really salty about it. Well, one of the one of the secret tasks was that uh, one of the union leaders was basically taking people from all the unions together, <clears throat> specifically pure hearted people, because they're just going to retcon the whole children save the world thing. Instead, it's <laughs> pure hearted people save the world. Pure hearted people, which is here's, mostly, here's what I think is hilarious, which right? Which is mostly here's children, is and hilarious. that's bullshit. Because if you've ever been to public school, <laughs> children are not pure of heart; they are little assholes. Here's what, I think, here's what I think is hilarious about this: they're they they decided that they weren't going to fully retcon it. So the way that they didn't fully retcon it you can't is just that do the a children retcon. were all adolescent in the you, sense that, like, they were all like 13, 14 years old, and I'm sitting here going. That's like the darkest time. That is like time. the least, I was that's say, like that's the like least, least pure, pure time. group <laughs> of children yeah, that, that is, exists. That is, the, that is the, the prime time of I fucked your mom last night on Xbox Live. Yeah, right? I mean, really seriously. And if you go on, if you go, <laughs> thanks for announcing that on our podcast. Cool. <laughs> if you go Not on... Not by Ringo is audible. <laughs> If you go on uh, like live, live like Xbox Live or like PSN or uh, you know any like like VR chat or whatever live experience, you hear a lot of thirteen year olds like just fucking swearing up a storm because they they just learned how to use the swear words properly and now they're like oh my god I have the power and they won't shut the fuck up about it so they're trying they they use the, they use the old insults from you know the back corners of the 1980s. book yeah that they're yeah. like these are the coolest freshest insults and we're all up here in our thirties like man who the fuck popped you out of their vagina <laughs> like yesterday. <laughs> Like what the hell? <laughs> Why don't you go crawl back up in there, boy? Your insults have no effect. 
bring up something. I'm, I'm going to tangent a little bit because I think this is actually worth bringing up. And and I think it's worth bringing up because Kingdom Hearts is a big part of this. Um, there is definitely a divide these days b- between adult gamers and the new up and coming adolescent gamers. And there's a sense oftentimes in each group that we're the true gamers. And then the adult gamers are like, these guys are little shits who don't know what they're talking about. And the adolescents are like, these guys are old people who are just like over the horizon and don't no point to give them anything or whatever. The fact of the matter um, is that all gamers are true gamers and everybody has different tastes. Yeah. So you can't judge you can't judge a thirteen year old for playing what's available to them at the time. I do I do I do wanna say one thing though that I that did make me like few old man speak for a minute when I uh, when I when I happened to me. Which was I, I was trying to say something on Facebook to someone. I believe I used oh, I was I was talking to um my mom was asking questions about the car her car. And like why it might be doing something. And she said there was steam coming out of the car. And I was trying to explain to her the not just, first of all, why do you have water in your radiator? And second of all, water is not the only fluid in a car that steams. Um, and she asked if it could be transmission fluid. And I, and I was going to say, or I, I replied something like, if your transmission fluid is steaming, I want to know what your car is made of. Because that shit doesn't start steaming until 485 degrees Fahrenheit. And it auto-corrected Fahrenheit to Fortnite. Wow. <laughs> and I had, a, I had an old man moment of, what the hell is this bullshit? <laughs> what the hell? What the hell have these damn kids been putting in my auto-correct box? Goddamn yeah, motherfucking right. children. Holy shit. What the fuck is this? When I was there, it's garbage. What the hell? Why the hell you need 135 dances in your goddamn game? <laughs> you can't just All combine right, yeah. Call of Duty and Minecraft. It don't work that way, you dumb bitches. <laughs> it's not really Call of Duty or Minecraft. You can't combine PUBG and Minecraft, you dumb bitches. Yeah, it's a little more accurate. But they did, though. Yeah, All right. Did. Tangent over, moving on. So, (laughs) again, I have no idea how it happens, but the Great Keyblade War happens. And uh, when the Great Keyblade War happens, you know, all that stuff I mentioned earlier, the apocalypse, uh, lots of people die, and uh, the world gets shattered into a million bajillion pieces. Basically, the world gets... The way they describe it is, the world is swallowed by darkness, but then... There were shards of light in the hearts of children, and they brought Can I ask children a quick shards of light from the hearts of children. Let me finish together and birthed the world anew. But it was broken and in many pieces, and now every world out there is a star, and every star out there is another world you can go to. And then this just inky black darkness abyss between the two, between all of them. Can I ask a question? Sure. What's happened to the Master of Masters at this point? Is he still alive? Okay, cool. Actually, what I can confirm for you is this. There is a scene of the masters of Ma- of the master of masters making an appearance after the events of um, Kingdom Hearts three, which is the latest point in the timeline right now. I watched my friend Dahmer last night. What the fuck? Uh, actually, no, I don't want to know. Shut the fuck up. We're going back to Kingdom Hearts. <laughs> okay. All right. Uh, Bullshit. So all I know from that is after the Keyblade War, the like King uh, Keyblade users are like kind of rarer after that. Because before the Keyblade War, just everybody had a different Keyblade. There were armies, obviously, of them. Um, and the Keyblade War was supposed to be fought against hearts. Keybladers of Light and Keybladers of Darkness. But then we pretty much only ever see one Keyblader of Darkness for the rest of the story until Dream Drop Distance and the whole 13 Darknesses BS. Um, Organization but, 13. Then. From what I gathered, uh, Xehanort goes one way, and Ericus, who's like one of the other, he's one of the major light masters, goes another way. I don't know why they survived out of all the people or whatever. I know that the two of them were young together, learning to wield Keyblades at some point. They were in some, I don't remember the name of it, it's the final stage where you fight the final boss in Kingdom Hearts 3, and there's a name for it, but I don't remember what the name for it is. But it's like a mirrored plane of windmills and Victorian England stuff. And, uh, or not Victorian, but like... will defeat the light? I don't know. No, I think the light 
We defeat the darkness. That is a whole cutscene too, yeah. I, I like throughout Kingdom Hearts 3, they keep cutting back to these two having a chess match when they're like eight years old. Um well they're probably like thirteen, you know, in the midst of, of peak edgy. And see here's the thing. <laughs> um here's the thing. In that regard, I would argue that um what's his name? Who I just said the name of and now I've forgotten. <sighs> Not Xehanort, but the other guy. Xenus. <laughs> Zemnus. Sorry, I was just copying Ringo. <laughs> Roxas. Roxas. <laughs> Vivi. <laughs> Davis, like you asked me to talk about this, and you're just cutting me off. <laughs> there are troopers. So what? Are we done? <laughs> Okay. Fucking continue, fat ass. <laughs> God damn. All right. Are we done? Are we, yes, are we done? With okay. Talk. Moving on. Um, I was going to say it's Ericus, by the way. That's the name I was looking for. Ericus is the more mature one because essentially the edgy comes for everybody during their teen years. And Ericus was like, you, Ericus figured out quickly enough, you know, this really isn't like a good way to be. I need to be more chill about stuff. And Xehanar was just like, no, embrace the edge. <laughs> I need to listen to less. I need to listen to less Bullet for My Valentine and more Nirvana. <laughs> Which, by the way, isn't that many steps away. <laughs> no, not. Here's the thing. Here's the thing. Music that has that. If I could just say this for a minute. Music that has like that, that feel to it. That when you're, you're, when you're young and you're looking at music that was popular in the 90s or in the 80s or in the, in the early, early 2000s, 2000s and you're going that's that's like older music that isn't it doesn't have the same feel it doesn't it doesn't understand me the same the thing is when this we were your age and that was when the music was coming out we thought that about the 80s and the 90s yeah and now we're like and, oh my uh, god this whole song is just like happy synthesizers holy shit that's awesome yeah and that's that's the entire 80s just rock guitar and synthesizers. And then you have to realize that the people who were who were teenagers in the 80s, when that music was coming out, they felt the same way about that music. So it's just a generational thing. New stuff comes out and the new stuff is embraced by the new people and the old stuff is kind of like yesteryear's garbage that we don't care about. And it's going to happen every time. But moving on to Kingdom Hearts, there is a huge jump between the Keyblade War and Birth, uh, Birth by Sleep. And I don't have any fucking clue what happens in that gap oh, other than other than um mickey becomes yen uh, yen said becomes a master xehanort becomes a master ericus becomes a master at some point prior to all that ericus and xehanort have a bunch of chess games and they talk about the edginess of darkness and the goodness of lightness and argue over which one's better and then ericus chooses to be a master of light and xehanort chooses to be a master of dark and at this point in the story from what i gather that being dark doesn't inherently make you evil, but then for the rest of the story, it does. So I don't know. Um, it's, it's not that being dark makes you evil. It's just that Xehanort's a dick and he fucked with everything. So basically. anyway, um, at some point in the, the future, book. or at some point, there's a little birth by dream. 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 Birth by drip. <laughs> <laughs> by drip. I keep mixing up birth by sleep and dream drop distance in my head. Birth by birth dream. By drip. <laughs> birth by drop on head. <laughs> I'm gonna shut up, Brick. <laughs> shut up, Brick. If you know the joke, you know the joke. If you don't know the joke, you don't know the joke. Shut I'm not explaining it anyway. <laughs> so. Um, Ericus, uh, Yensid takes Mickey as a student. Ericus takes, oh God, I'm blanking. There are too many characters in this story. Aqua Some of them even the have girl. pronounceable names. Terra oh, is about the guy. Aqua, Terra, right. and, uh, and, uh, not Roxas. Yeah, not Roxas. So, uh, Xanart takes not Roxas yeah, as his student. Not Roxas. Um, which, here's the thing. I remember his dark doppel doppelganger's name. 
for some reason, but I can't remember his name. The dark doppelganger is Vanitas, but I don't remember. I remember it's the Latin word for wind. I do remember that, but I don't remember what it was. <laughs> Y'all gonna be like, Google the Latin word for wind. <laughs> no, uh, no, I'm making it easier on myself. Ventus. Yeah, Ventus. I was gonna say, I just, <laughs> looked, just up looked up birth by sleep characters, yeah. <laughs> All right, cool. Ventus. Right, so Ventus, uh, not Roxas. I'm gonna treat that like his last name. Also, Vanitas just looks like he's part of Daft Punk. He really do. But then he takes his helmet off and <gasps> he's Sora, but with black hair. Um, <laughs> yeah, I know. Yeah, I know. Yeah, I know. Holy, I know. holy shit! It really is. Oh wow. <laughs> oh, what's that guy's name again? What the v- dark Vin- Vanitas? Van- Vanitas. <laughs> I say it like that because somebody in the series was like, they they pronounce his name Vanitas. Or Vanitas. Hang on, hang on. And and I was like, okay, I'm doing that from now on. H- hang on, let me just. Because the 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 fan, oh, the fans all just Vanitas. Yeah, that this guy. This ugly fuck. Let me see okay. If I can, let me see if I can do this. I'm I'm gonna this I'm gonna ugly bastard. I'm gonna live edit this bullshit again and see if it works. <laughs> Why does he have a Daft Punk helmet? What the fuck? I'll I'll get there. So anyway, Xehanort has Ventus. Uh, Xehanort is obsessed with creating the Keyblade. Oh and my yes, god. It's called- I just found a fucking even though there's like a bajillion keyblades. I just found a cosplay like superhero costume for fucking Vanitas. Here we go. This guy. I I I, I didn't need to know that that costume existed. Like it can go die in a fire. I didn't need to know either. But you know what? Now I do. For those of you watching this later, take a good look at this asshole. And now I'm making him go away. Yeah, you're going to really look fucking real stupid if it doesn't work. I am, so, yeah. like I said, Zehenort is uh, obsessed with creating the Keyblade, even though there's a lot of Keyblades. So I'm going to take a moment to explain what I mean, because it's stupidly confusing, and I don't understand why Square Enix did it. Um, so basically, for the rest of this, I'm referring to the Keyblade as the X-Blade. And the reason I'm going to do this is because... Specifically, they mentioned that there's a Greek symbol that looks like an X, and that Greek symbol's name is Key. And that's why they call it the Keyblade, even though all the other blades are also called Keyblades. And it's but stupid and confusing. K-Y. And they just wanted the X because the X makes it sound cool. That's all it was. I. That's all it was. Um... So he wants to make the X-Blade, which can only be made by a heart that is purely one half light or that's perfectly one half light and one half darkness, which it turns out Ventus has. Um, and then wow. you're pure, you're pure, or you're pure, I shouldn't say that, you're perfectly half light, half dark hearted person was I'm sorry, doesn't acted that make way it, more like... <laughs> doesn't that make it not light or dark and just a normal fucking person? Twilight. It makes it Twilight! It's that's so why there's garbage. Twilight Town! It's so garbage. So it's so terrible. garbage. It's, it's horrible. Garbage. Hey, just so we're clear, to be fair, Square Enix did not call it that. The fandom called it that. Twilight? Because it's like heart. in the midst of both darkness and light, so it's Twilight. You know, like the fucking like the fucking thing. Like the fucking movie. To be fair, to be yeah. fair, there was a fan fiction called Twilight Heart that is like the only good fan fiction I've ever read out of I'm any. I'm sorry, did you just say good fan fiction? <laughs> you are, you sir are a liar. I'm, I'm injured, sir. You put good and fan fiction in the same sentence? They do exist, my friend. They're incredibly rare, but they do exist. Ah, uh, I doubt it. Personally, I'm a fan of ones where we uh, just disassociate from the original. And uh, we basically just, it's a story that takes place in the same world, but doesn't involve itself too heavily with any of the original yeah, I, characters. Y- you know, it's another tangent, but like, you can really tell where somebody's head at is, is at if you read fan fiction. Because like the first couple yeah, of chapters, true. they'll be like, man, yeah, you know, this guy, he really is, he, he came out of this cave and he was like, oh, wow, I've never seen this world before. Oh, this is so amazing. And, you know, then he learns about like people and like their struggles and stuff. And he's like, wow, I could really help these people. And then he fucks somebody and then he goes back to his adventure. <laughs> <laughs> Let's be like, honest. Let's just um... be a teenager. Like, 
<laughs> you have ideas, but that's also when your hormones are raging. So you're just like, oh, also, I'd like to just fuck really quick and get that out of my system, and then I'll move on. <laughs> and then people don't understand that because they view that as some horrible, evil thing to do. Or or rather, they demonize the whole... Yes. Uh, Sex is evil! <laughs> it's because you take their precious characters from, from media and you make them fuck? Yeah. <laughs> it's because they took Sonic the Hedgehog. No, I'm sorry. It's because they took Mordecai and fucking Rainbow Dash. Yeah. Oh my god! I was gonna say the, the one where the the one where Tails <laughs> the one where Tails gets a female clone of himself and they fuck. Oh, what oh the fuck! God. I didn't know that existed. I didn't need to know that existed. <laughs> Why? <laughs> We're just googling it. <laughs> Ringo's all up in here like, the, he's like, the, the one where Tails gets a female clone and they fuck, I need to know for science. <laughs> oh, I'm like, what the fuck are you talking about? <laughs> it's so hard not to turn this into another Sonic episode. <laughs> to, to be fair, to be fair when, you, when you talk about prime bad fan fiction, it's Sonic. <laughs> it's always Sonic. It's always Sonic. <laughs> I don't know why for, I for in some the existence, reason, in the some reason that's uh, just how it uh, is. Dude, I remember thinking this when I was younger. Like I, I liked fan I like the idea of fan fiction. I like the idea of being able to explore other versions of worlds that I really enjoyed and liked. The sooner we get through the bullshit story of Kingdom Hearts, the sooner we could talk about the the gameplay, which is actually the good part. Yeah, that's fair. Let me finish the story. I'm going to try to, like, blitz this now because I'm getting really tired of this taking forever. Um, so Xehanort tries to get Ventus to make the X-Blade, which doesn't work because Ventus is too nice. So then <laughs> the key he beats... The, he, he be, shut up. He beats up <laughs> Ventus, and then he rips all the darkness out of his heart to make Vanitas the, the horrible Daft Punk doppelganger. And, um... And then this literally, like, breaks Ventus's brain, and Xehanort's like, oh, well, shit, that wasn't the plan. Um, you're kind of useless to me now, though, so I don't know what I'm going to do. So while, so while he's trying to figure that out, he takes him to Destiny Islands, which is apparently Xehanort's home world. Destiny Islands is one of the many worlds. I'm not explaining. The, it, if I say the name of something, just assume it's something in the game. I'm not explaining shit at this point. Um, while he's there, Sora's soul is on its way... Sora being the main character for most of the main title games. Sora's soul is on its way to its body because his body is about to be born. And his soul, like, what? runs in. I'm not joking. This is an actual <laughs> thing in the story. Sora's soul is on his way to his body because he's about to be born or he's about to be conceived or whatever. I don't fucking know. And on his way there, he, he like, his heart passes by Ventus in the spirit realm, I guess. And and he notices that Ventus's soul is, like, cracked and broken and shit. And then uh, he's just like, yo, um, you okay, man? And he goes, huh? He's so yeah. high. He's, he's high on spirit know. weed. Yeah. He's just, like, well, he has, like, no emotion and no reaction to anything. So, like, he's just like, yeah, I'm, I'm good, bruh. And then uh, Sora's so like, you look kind of broken. Yeah, kind of. Here, I'll give you a piece of my soul so you can be whole again. And then and that's why he Ventus, looks like Sora. Ventus, that's why Vanitas looks like Sora. Um, yeah. Which doesn't make sense because that part of him was removed before that bullshit happened. Whatever. Um, so, uh, so Ventus wakes up because now he's basically got a heart of pure light with no darkness in it. And uh, uh, he doesn't like wake up, wake up. He just sort of like stirs or whatever. And then. <laughs> He has none of his he has none of his memories, so Xanort takes him to Eriquist and spins this sob story about how, oh, you know, there was a training accident and this happened and I'm such a terrible master and I'm so sorry I failed my student. I can't be trusted with people anymore. And Eriquist is like, No, no, it's okay. You're not no, evil. my it's sweet summer good. prince. You're you're fine. Like we're we're best buds. I'll take care of your student for you and, and you can take some time to grieve and so Xehanort makes this whole sob story, and Eric is like, it's okay, bro. And then he takes Ventus under his wing, and then sometime later, Birth by Sleep happens. And the story of Birth by Sleep is basically Xehanort... I born, and my mom was asleep. Right. 
Um, <laughs> so Xehanort shows up and he and Eriquist preside over Aqua and Terra's uh, Mark of Mastery exam so they can become masters. Aqua passes, Terra doesn't because he succumbs to the power of darkness. And then uh, Xehanort's like, I want his body. Um, <laughs> what? 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 <laughs> Excuse me? <laughs> Yo, that's a handsome old man! Okay. Yo, okay. buddy! Y'all need to learn about personal <laughs> space! <laughs> so explanations are in order. Xehanort's getting old, and he's realizing that his old self is definitely not going to live long enough to see his dream of creating the ultimate X-Blade. So he's looking for someone's uh, body to steal and then have it. <laughs> um, he's, see looking for someone, he's looking for someone's body to inhabit. Basically, he wants to kick someone's soul out of their body and take over their body so he can have a younger body so he can live longer. And so that's why he wants Terra's body, because Xehanort's like basically an entity of darkness at this point he just hasn't shown that off to the world yet and and now that uh now that uh tara is utilizing the power of darkness he has a conduit to get to him uh so basically tara gets pissed because he didn't pass his exam and xehanort's like you know there's a way to force everybody to admit that you're so powerful that you would have to be a master and starts tara down his road of descent into darkness have you ever uh, heard, point, the, you ever heard the tragedy of Darth Pelagius the Wise? Right, right. Basically, <laughs> exactly that. Xehanort is Sidious, let's be honest. Um, oh, shit. So well, then, it's like they did. In Star Wars uh, Legends, Sidious has a bunch of fucking clones of himself that he uses. It's like they took 31 bits of different stories and mashed them all together. Oh, <laughs> I love that I just gave him that epiphany. Oh my god, he is! Like, yeah, he's 100% Darcinius. Well, I'm fucking a dude. I don't. You think I give a shit about Kingdom Hearts? The fuck? You gave a shit enough for that revelation to affect you? Yeah, because he gives a shit about about Star Wars. Wars. Yeah. (laughs) So, anyway, um, at this point, by the way, Xehanort did introduce his new student, Vanitas, who still looks like a. a Daft Punk reject. So, uh, and Eriquis is all excited that Xehanort's finally felt good enough about himself to get another student and everything. Uh, anyway, Terra runs off to go, you know, commune with the darkness or whatever. Uh, Eriquis sends Aqua off to find Terra and stop him from doing the thing. And then Vanitas is like, well, I'm lonely, so I'm going to go find my friends and runs off despite being told specifically not to do that. <laughs> But he's an edgy teen oh, lad. Man. He doesn't listen to the lad. rules. No, he doesn't. He's and so the story of Birth by Sleep is largely young, young, just young them lad. running around the universe, meeting all the characters who are the original somebody versions of the nobodies you meet in Kingdom Hearts so 2. So who do you play in Birth by Sleep? You can play as Ventus or Aqua or Terra, and each one has a different storyline with different things. Uh-huh. Also, I was going to say... There's details! <laughs> there's I'm going to skip a lot of them. You also, you also get to see real early um, Disney and Kingdom Hearts... Or not Kingdom Hearts. Disney and Square Enix characters, like you meet Zack instead of meeting Cloud, um, oh, etc., etc. Yeah. You meet, like old Captain Pete, like Boatman Captain Pete, before he's a captain. Mm. Well, he would be the captain no. of the steamboat, but... You meet Pete in the Disney World, and in the you Disney World... The steamboat Willie, which is... That's in Kingdom Hearts 2. Okay. In the Disney World, uh, Pete's more like just a troublemaker. He's not really a problem. Oh, buddy, but he loses this race, and everyone hard. makes fun of him, and he's just sitting there doing his whole, like, nobody likes me business. And then Maleficent sort of just saunters in and goes, I can make everybody forced to respect you. No oh, good. Palpatine, too. Uh-huh. <laughs> By the way, she only gets to do that because original Palpatine shows up and says it to her first. Are you Although fucking fair, are you fucking serious? Mm-hmm. You're absolutely you're not kidding. Xanark goes to. Okay, Xanar. Okay, all right. Okay, cool. I thought you were actually telling me Palpatine shows up in the game and is like, hey, "Listen, Maleficent," and I was about to throw my fucking headphones and everything. I love you. Legitimately you thought it was an opportunity of Darth because it, because wise. Star Wars is a Disney now. Yeah, is there Star it Wars in Kingdom Hearts three? That's back. true. It wasn't. No. When, it wasn't back then. So I guess is Star but... Wars in in Kingdom Hearts three. Why would it be? 
no. I can't hear you. All he, I said, heard he, was, said, he said no. no. It cuts out when you fucking he, get he does, It does cut out when you try to eat your microphone like that. Yeah, but I don't think... Does mine do it? I don't think so. No, yours doesn't do it. Because it's actually yeah, a good... because I've actually got a microphone. Uh, it's I'm actually like... It. It's actually like a good microphone that you have there. Yeah. yeah. I could do ASMR with this thing. You probably could if you turned up the settings I'm high enough. I'm not going to, though. No. I'm not going to, though. No. Yeah. Yeah. No. You wouldn't be good at it. Yeah. You're a little asshole. No, I just don't... <laughs> <laughs> the goblin ASMR. <laughs> I think he's getting annoyed. <laughs> 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 Okay, we don't we don't have to finish the conversation about the story. We, we want and to then Zemnis and Xehanort and Euclidus and Euretha. Did you know? Did you know that if Why you rearrange? Euclidus and Euretha. Did you did you Why know that if you? I'm you getting show? I'm getting to that. Did you know that if you rearrange the letters of Zemnis, it spells man sex, and that's pretty gay, bro. <laughs> Honest, all the characters from two are gay as shit. Like the only straight one is Sora. I'm not maybe even convinced. Kyron. I'm not even convinced of that. Oh, Riku's that... totally gay for Sora, but I think Sora's too gay for What are you talking about, Dave? It's just really close friendship. Yeah. Right. It's yeah. the magic of friendship, David. <laughs> yeah, totally, definitely. <laughs> Has nothing at all to do with the gayness. Just, just like how Kyrie is just friends with Sora. Uh-huh. <laughs> That's all she will ever be. Definitely, totally will never be his love interest. It's like how Go- how Donald is just friends with Goofy. <laughs> <laughs> I love what you're insinuating there. <laughs> Great. Did, did, did that give you your answer, Ringo? Did that give you your answer for who's Donald what? gay for? Go- gay for Goofy? Yeah. Uh-huh. Gooby, please. Goofy, please. please give me dick. No. Hey, 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 I'm just saying, duck penis explodes, man. Fuck. <laughs> Shut up, man. <laughs> so the three students go out on their little journeys. The three stooges. And essentially, they, they culminate in Terragus taken over by Xehanor. I- I'm skipping a lot of detail because two, for two reasons. One, most of that detail really doesn't matter because half of it I already covered in the backstory. Um, because they just have these revelations as we move through the game. Um, so half of them don't matter, and the other half is just fan service to people who already play Kingdom Hearts 2. <coughs> but we're moving on. The the important parts are Terra goes further and further down his his um darkness trail until he's convinced that Ericus is a bad guy, goes home to confront Ericus about what's happening. Ericus, because he's, you know, the ultimate paladin of light, is like, oh, I failed you and now you must die, and then Terra kills him because Terra's way more powerful. And then, uh, <laughs> and then Terra goes to the Keyblade graveyard, I think, where he kind of fights Xehanort, and then Xehanort's like, "Give me your body," and takes him over. There's a whole final fight at the Keyblade graveyard, um, where uh, where all three of their stories kind of converge at the same time. So Ventus has been haunted by Vanitas the whole time, and now he has to fight Vanitas, and the two of them merge together and finally make oh, the Keyblade. Oh, buddy. Or the X-Blade. I just looked up pictures of Ericus because I didn't know what he looked like, and holy shit, it's just Mitsurugi. Yeah, uh, yeah, huh? It's, it's literally just Mitsurugi. Remember how you said they just took story bits from a million different things? Yep. I, yeah, see what they, yep, I see what they yanked from Soul Calibur now. <laughs> yep. <clears throat> so anyway, there's a, a huge final battle. I don't even remember what Aqua's... Uh, Aqua's rival is Bragg, who is... The somebody of the eye patch nobody with guns. Um, so uh, whose name I can't remember. Uh, all Which the nobodies one's not have Roxas? names. Huh? <clears throat> Which one's not Roxas? Ventus. Ventus. Oh, okay. So, okay. so anyway, uh, they all have their fight. Uh, essentially, what ends up happening is, uh, Terra's body gets possessed by Xehanort, but Terra still maintains some semblance of control, which causes the uh, a new personality to come forth that's kind of a mixture of Xehanort and Terra, and is kind of its own person. And that person goes and becomes a student of Ansem the Wise in Radiant Gardens, which will literally later will be called Hollow Bastion, but we'll get there. Um, oh, then that's like the only thing about Kingdom Hearts that I like. Uh, like the only area that I like is Hollow Bastion. Hollow Bastion. Hollow Bastion is really cool. Um, 
But I'm like trying the to get Council to the point of where Oblivion about, is fucking bullshit. Or I'm trying to get to the world. point. I'm trying to get to the point where we can talk about the gameplay and the areas and how cool they are. Yeah. Just just bear with me. Um it's just it's taking so long. Aqua tries to stop Ventus from combining with Vanitas, which doesn't work. They combine, they create the keyblade for about five seconds before Ventus gets all pissed off and kind of tears his own heart a new one. And then Vanitas just sort of disappears, I guess. I don't fucking know. He shows up at Kingdom Hearts 3 again like he never went anywhere. Um, And then Ventus goes into a coma because I I don't know. I guess that happens. And then um, Aqua takes his comatose body back to the castle that they all learn, which I want to say is called Final Destination, which, but I know that that's, that's a name of a fucking Smash Brothers stage. It's something similar to that. What, Final Destination? Yeah. So, um, so, but something similar to that. I don't remember the world. She takes him there. There's a castle. She puts him in some special room in the castle where nobody will fuck with him. And then she does some fancy weird shit with a key, with a keyblade and some card and transforms it into, um, Castle Oblivion. And now, with all that out of the way, we can finally discuss the first fucking game! Wow. <laughs> so in the first game, you play as Sora, who is just too adorable and pure for his own good. Um, that's, that's kind of uh, it's kind of gay he's, of you to say. I, I mean, they just made him that way. <laughs> he's like a child, though. He was like twelve. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. I mean, is like he's like super pure-hearted, and he kind of has like adorably naive, innocent ideals and stuff. That's more what I meant. Adorable, more in the sense of like, that's adorable, darling. Not, not in the sense of like, oh. <laughs> but anyway, uh, so the story of that is Sora, Kairi, and Riku, which is three children, live in Destiny Islands. They like to go to this one specific island to play games all the time. They have their little boats that go out there that'll be sort of kind of important later for like two seconds. They play around on the island, and you start the game just like playing with all the friends and learning the basic mechanics and everything. And then one day, a storm comes in. And Sora notices that Riku and Kairi's boats are, 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 no, they made a raft to go to other worlds because Riku wanted to go to other worlds because Kairi came from another world. We don't know what world she came from, just as she came from another world. And now Riku's like, so they so essentially they build a raft because they think that by building a raft, they can go to other worlds because Kairi came from another world, which is the dumbest shit I've ever heard. But OK, whatever. Um... A storm happens, and Sora's like, oh my god, the raft will get destroyed. And he paddles out in a paddle boat, which is way fucking better than a raft in the first place, to the island. Notices that Kairi and Riku's paddle boats are also there. Runs around looking for Riku and Kairi. And there's like these... And and this is when you first meet the Heartless in the first game. They're just a bunch of like little creatures that just melt out of the ground around you. You you get you find a fancy door, you go into the door. Oh, I should mention earlier there was a bit where you found some dude in a cave who was all like this world is connected. Oh yeah, to the darkness. And uh that guy comes in important later. He goes to that exact same place and there was like a door in the cave that led somewhere that nobody knew about. And there were cute drawings on the on the wall about how Kyrie and Sora loved each other and everything, and how they wanted to share a Paupu fruit because that was like a uh, our souls will be forever intertwined thing. They they wanted uh, to share a pee pee fruit. What? Sure. Um. So he finds what appears to be Kyrie there, and then she sort of just goes Sora, and then reaches her hand out, and then the door opens and wind blasts her towards him, and then she just kind of like phases through him, and he's like. And, and and Sora is concerningly unfazed by all of this. He's <laughs> goes just like, back okay, outside and must be dreaming. <laughs> yeah, right. Goes back outside, and while he's trying to not die to the little shadow thingies, um, which are heartless, the, the heartless are called shadows. Um, he suddenly keyblade, and then he can fight them. And then he goes out to another little spot on the island and finds Riku, who's all like. Join me in the darkness, my friend. Kyrie is already with us. And then gets swallowed by a darkness portal, which scares the piss out of Sora. And this is the first time he's not concerningly unfazed. Um, and he's like, I don't know that I want to do that. And then a giant fucking mega heartless with a giant heart shaped hole in its chest goes up. And you have to fight that. And then what is, does and, and I, have a name? I do want to point out, I do want to point out, well, I can. That um, well, his friend Ro- or <laughs> Roxas, well, his friend uh, Riku is there, like, 
I'm going to the darkness now. He's like, oh my God, Rico, no. And then a giant heartless shows up and he's just like, oh, okay. Yeah, right. He's <laughs> yeah. so concerningly unfazed. Um, so, so. Wasn't um, there some shit about that fucking giant heartless is like Sora's shadow or something? That was a theory that was never confirmed. Okay. Because there's actually Shadow Sora in the game. And then also in later games, Anti Sora, who is it's literally Heartless Sora. So it's kind of cringe, not gonna lie. You fight the, the it's called the dark side. You fight the dark side. The dark, and the reason that thing happened is because early in the game, there's a little bit that teaches you all the kind of like major storyline based mechanics where you choose you you choose some you make some choices about how your gameplay is gonna be. Sora, choose the sword and, uh, or the shield and the or this fucking stick. Little, I guess. Yeah. The final boss of that little area is another dark side, and the dark side spawns from Sora's shadow after the game says, the closer you get to the light, the larger your shadow will become. And then Kingdom Hearts is full of dumb shit like that. Uh, Anyway, after you defeat this other dark side, which shows up later, um, he, uh, you get sucked up into a portal in the sky, basically, and then you wake up in Traverse Town. And Sora, instead instead of being like, my whole fucking world got destroyed. Where's my mom? Where's my dad? Like a normal person. He's like, <laughs> he's just on a wow, punk somewhere. I'm in another world. Oh, amazing. Um, so, ha ha. Wow. My name's Harold. I have a purple crayon. So now we're going to jump cut harshly over to Disney world because the rest Disney of the story didn't world. happen. That. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I think it's called Disney castles, the name of the world, but whatever. So, Is this episode going to end up having to be multiple parts? It might. Uh, so I, I'm trying. I'm really trying. So uh, basically everyone works up in Disney Castle and all of a sudden the king is gone. The king being Mickey. Um, so uh, King Mickey's gone and Donald, who's his court mage, and Goofy, who's his court jester, I mean captain of the guard, uh, decide that they're going to go find him. And they're going to take with them this dude named... They're going to take with him Jiminy Cricket, who is from yet another world, who survived his world and somehow got shot into Disney World. And they're like, and then he's going to be like the keeper of the of the journal with all of your like enemy entries and world entries and everything. In it. How are we um, going to anyway. get there? A, a, a board of gummy ship made of gummy blocks piloted by yeah. chipmunks? My God, yeah. I didn't really want to get into it. So they make a Gummy spaceship ship. of questionable origin whose fuel source is also questionable, and then fuck off no, to Traverse no, Town. No, like Chip find... and Dale, it's probably like the souls of the damned or something. It's smiles. The ship runs off smiles. Who's smiles? I'll let you figure that out. Um, Moving on, Uh, they, they get to... Traverse Town, where they're supposed to meet up with a guy named Leon. Um, and they kind of like walk around Traverse Town <laughs> with Leon, who is Squally and Hart from, from Final Fantasy VIII, by the way, in case you were wondering. Uh, meanwhile, Sora's running around trying to figure out anything, I guess. And at some point, Leon comes up to Sora and is like, you don't deserve to have the Keyblade. It was stupid to choose a child like you. And then he fights you. And then you can either win the fight. (laughs) You can either win the fight, at which point he'll kick your ass anyway. Or you can just, you know, take one hit and die because it's faster because that's what I always do. Uh, And then Yuffie from Final Fantasy VII comes down and goes, ah, Squall, you were too hard on him. And he's like, it's Leon. And then Leon, you're a bitch. (laughs) Then there's a whole conversation between Aerith and I'm Final sorry. Fantasy VII. I'm sorry. That's when that's when Sid from Final Fantasy VII shows up. Leon, you're a bitch. Actually, it's you do funny. meet from Final Fantasy VII. It's he runs funny. the item shop. He also runs the gummy store. Um, yeah. He's like, you're a bunch well, of late. Kids. Well, here's the thing. He runs the item shop for like a little bit of the game, and then he's like, oh yeah, I was just covering this for a friend. My actual job is the gummy ship vendor. And then uh, that's what he does for the rest of the game because he was the, the airship dude in every Final Fantasy game. Yeah. Um, so anyway, uh, then there's a whole conversation about the, the nature of the universe and the Heartless and all that garbage, and you need to fight the Heartless, and you need to go to Worlds and basically lock the hearts of the Worlds so the Heartless can't eat the hearts of the world because the Heartless eat the hearts of the world and the worlds di- disappeared like yours did. And then uh, you're still concerningly unfazed about everything. Um, and uh, so 
Then you meet up with uh, Leon for about two seconds before you're attacked by Heartless, at which point Leon's like, like jumps out, he throws a Heartless out a window, jumps out after, and he's like, kill the bitches! And then, like, they move on. Um, let me see. And then most of the rest of the story is you bouncing around different worlds, saving them. Uh, at some point you meet Riku, who Maleficent has found, and whispered in his ear like the sidious wannabe she is. And, uh, and convinced Re- and she's all like, because uh, Riku's like, oh, cool, I found you. Let's go find Kyrie and go have fun to- or go do whatever together. We'll go on an adventure. And you're like, I- and-, and Sora's kind of like, I'm kind of in the middle of something right now, but I'll get back to you. And then Maleficent is Maleficent's like, you see, he doesn't care about you. He's already replaced you with new friends. You should kill him. Um, <laughs> kill him. I'm not I'm not joking. That's basically how it goes. So then Riku becomes like the recurring boss you have to keep fighting. And then there's this like he council of Disney villains that sort of shows up every now and then. Oh yeah. I love how they're like <laughs> I love how they're like, here's a mysterious council of villainous people, but if you've ever watched a Disney movie, you know who all of them you are. You know what all of them are, yep. So- like, um, the only one I didn't know when I first played was Oogie Boogie. And that's because I only watched Nightmare Before Christmas once so long ago that I couldn't remember what his voice sounded like. And I was just like, wait, who's that? Because they had to get a different voice actor than the original Oogie Boogie voice actor, if I recall. So I didn't, then, I didn't recognize it. But then it's it. like, that one's definitely Everyone Hades. else is like, that one's, that one's definitely, definitely Hook. Hades. That one's <laughs> definitely Captain Hook, yeah. That one's definitely Jafar. Is it, who Ooh. else would say, they look like bilge rats, the lot of them, but Captain Hook? Mm-hmm. He wasn't so, even a good villain. No, he was terrible. And he's also a garbagely easy boss Yeah, he's well. stupidly easy to beat. Yeah. Just, uh, you know, fly. Um, so <laughs> anyway, uh, I think that's how Peter Pan beat him too. Cause, cause he just can't, fly. so, you know, just fly and you'll beat him. Um, so anyway, uh, like I said, most of the story is just you running around and saving worlds and there's not a lot of detail for me to cover there. The important part is eventually you do it in Captain Hook's world in, uh, in Neverland, you do find Kyrie's body finally. And then Riku says some cryptic shit about Kyrie being with Sora. And Sora's like, but she's right there. <laughs> and uh, he's like, yeah, um, no, listen, I'm going to do my thing. She's been and then with I need to you kill the you. whole time. Yeah, and then I need to come back and kill you. But while I wait for that, I'm just going to spawn a heartless version of you to fight, who is a god-awful boss battle. Um, god-awful. And when I say right? god-awful, I just mean it's the mechanically it's bad it's not hard it's just like not good game mechanics um anyway uh so then that's right oh, wait. Basically, you, you, go. Go any, you basically don't get any more story until oh, you get to hollow bastion and then in hollow bastion you find out just back. yeah there's that that's all the fair. all the annoying phrases from the boss fights in kingdom hearts dance water dance and the only, the only, the only one on the list of most annoying boss fight statements. Jump up on the hydra's back. That is not Kingdom Hearts. Is you know what they say? The more the, the more merrier. The merrier. Yeah, yeah. And guess what? It's from fucking Sonic. Anyway, yeah, it sure is. Um, so uh, when you get to Hollow Bastion, you meet Beast, who apparently just fucking barbarian raged his way through the darkness to get to where bell was taken <laughs> of um, course. and uh so uh and he's like completely beast is just like unfazed by the darkness trying to take him over he's just like no nah, i ain't got time for your shit i've got one uh one track mind and i'm on track a and you're over here on track q and i don't care um, Wait, question. Oh. Which game was it that had Winnie the Pooh? All of them. All of them? Oh, really? Okay. Yeah. Yes. In every game, there's a point where Merlin or someone Crystal else comes Merlin. up and is like, oh, there's this book that's a world and you need to restore the pages of the book. And if you really want to get all your completion shit and... Um, here's the thing. In the first game, there's a good reason to do it because the, the, the Honeypot Keyblade actually gives a good buff. But in every other game, there's no good reason to do it. It's just there, there for completion. Is there Winnie the Pooh in Birth by Sleep? Oh my fucking god, of course And all is. three characters visit him at some point. 
why is it that Kingdom Hearts seems to be like telling the same story 20 different times? Because it's 20 like, different <laughs> pieces of a story. It's a shit story, though. It really it is. is. It really is. So so here's try to get the rest of the Chain way through Kingdom Hearts. Hearts. One. <laughs> oh, by the way, are we going one, two Chain of Memories or one Chain of Memories, two? I'm going to explain Chain of Memories. We're going in, in sequential uh, order. Honestly, okay. Chain of Memories is like a I sentence. I started at Union Cross, by the way. <laughs> yeah, it really is. Um, so anyhow, uh, hold on. Where are we at? Right. He meets Beast. And then Riku's like, oh, by the way, I'm the true wielder of the Keyblade. And the Keyblade just sort of zips over to him, at which point Donald and Goofy are like, well, we have to follow the Keyblade Master. So they go with Riku, and Sora's like, for the first time in the entire game, is like actually sad about something. He's like, I'm all alone. And then you get them. And, and that only happens so that gameplay-wise, you can have a we took all your powers away from you, now figure shit out level. Um, so then you find Riku and Riku attacks you and then Goofy defends you and he's like, well, he's still my friend, so I'm not going to let you hurt him. And then as soon as that happens, Sora's like, oh, my heart is happy and set again. So boom, I have the Keyblade again. No problem. And it was just really contrived. And then Riku's like, that makes me angry and I'm going to kill you over it. And then you fight him. It's and then shitty fucking story <laughs> it really is so bad. and you fight him and then you find out that the whole plot which you didn't know anything about until right now um was to collect seven specific princesses from the disney worlds and one from square enix named Kyrie, um who are known as the seven princesses of heart because their hearts are pure light with absolutely no darkness in them and somehow getting them all together is going to make Guess it's what? Gonna make... The ultimate Keyblade, and then um, they're going to use that Keyblade to do something. Maleficent's really unclear on what her plan they're was. They're actually <laughs> just going to do a Power Rangers thing and make a giant princess mecha suit, and then you have to fight that as uh, a boss. Uh, so, Riku, who's now possessed by Ansem, the Seeker of Darkness, uh, creates the Dark Keyblade out of the seven princesses' hearts of pure light. Because that makes sense. And then and then he unlocks the darkness in Maleficent's heart, turning her into a dragon. Got to open the Because that darkness. makes sense. And she's a b -b -b bitch of a boss. <laughs> in, in the sense no, that, no, like, no, no, you no. beat she her in, like, five seconds. She turned into a dragon seconds. in the fucking movie. She, yes. Yes, she did. Yes. But there is no so reason for that. Why are you about it? No, no, no. What I'm saying is like, that's it's contrived as shit within the story of Kingdom Hearts. There's no yeah. reason for her to turn into a dragon. They just needed an excuse to make Dragon Maleficent happen. So then you kill Dragon Maleficent, which, like, supposedly permanently eliminates her. But, you know, if you've played any of the other games, you know that ain't true. Um, then you go confront Riku, who you have to fight three more times. <laughs> and then... <laughs> And then, uh, like, you beat him, and he does this thing where he transforms into Ansem, and he goes, I'm going to the Dark Realm, and if you want to save the world, you'll have to come and get me. Goodbye. And then uh, and then your character's like, uh, oh, not before re revealing the fact that um, Kairi's heart has been inside Sora the whole time, and that's what the translucent phase through Sora thing was at the beginning of the story that Sora was, you know, concerningly unfazed about. And so he's like, Sora's like, okay, uh, well, I don't want to hurt Kyrie, so I'm just going to stab myself with this Keyblade and release my heart and her heart. And then she'll go and be back in her body again. And then I'll turn into a Shadow Heartless. Because why? I don't reasons. fucking know. To be fair... This is probably the best moment in the story because you have the main character making a legitimate sacrifice for someone he cares about. It's that is just, a really good story beat. It's just that when you say the sentence that out loud, just, it just makes no yeah. sense. Uh, so, so here's the thing. They reverse it five minutes later. <laughs> That's so true. So it has no meaning. That's because true. you play yeah. as little Sora Heartless and you run around trying to follow Kyrie. And Donald and Goofy, who don't know what the fuck happened to Sora, and are basically like, 
Well, the world is collapsing in on itself, so let's fucking go. So they're running and trying to leave, and then you follow them, and then Donald gets mad because this one annoying Heartless, which somehow he's able to differentiate from all the other Heartless, has been following them for so long. And then... He's uh, like, he's fucking... like, fuck, I'm gonna bust them with the Thunderbolt. And then, and then, Harry and then is like, Harry's wait, like, wait. There's something different about this one. <laughs> and then she gives him a hug and he magically transforms back into Sora because fucking reasons, I don't know. They literally never explain that shit. So, so then you, uh, then there's some kind of conversation. I think you take Kyrie back It's the back magic to of friendship, Trevor's Dave. Town. Not good enough. Um, so, <laughs> so I think you take Kyrie back to Traverse Town. And then you go back to uh, Hollow Bastion and you follow Ansem the Seeker of Darkness into the Darkness Realm where you fight his giant dick ship. I'm not joking about that. Um, and he, and then when you beat his giant dick ship... Uh, no, wait, sorry. My bad. You fight Ansem three more times now. You fight him once as a dude. You fight him once as a floaty dude with a heartless behind him. And then you fight him once in the Darkness Realm with a giant dick ship. And then say, first he's a dude, a then he's a JoJo where, dude. Where, uh, yeah, yeah, it's he's a fucking stand. Totally a stand user. Yeah. Um. Then you have the cutscene where he's like, "Kingdom Hearts is darkness," and then Sora's like, "No, it's not. It's light." And then the doors open, and then light floods out and disintegrates Ansem, which doesn't permit. No, it is Kingdom Hearts is light. <laughs> 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 yeah, exactly. As the door opens. And here's open. the thing that's dumb. Because the door opens. And what's behind the door? Mickey Mouse! The Realm of Darkness! Oh. So Ansem was right. Dipshit. So, <laughs> I don't know why light came flooding out of the Realm of Darkness, but okay. Whatever. And then Riku and Mickey are on the other side of the door. And they have to close the door so darkness doesn't leak into the rest of the universe. And then Sora's just kind of... And then Kyrie goes back to Destiny Islands and all the worlds are restored and Sora just kind of fucking off to nowhere land and no one knows what happens to him. No explanation. He doesn't go home. Nothing. Just we're here now in fucking twilight of nothing. I don't know. And then at the end of the game, you get a nice little cutscene where he's like in a grassy field and there's a dude in a black cloak who's like, follow me. And then... I guess that insinuates they didn't plan to. They did plan to have a second game, but they didn't plan to have a full blown sequel. I don't think. Um, then you get a uh, chain of memories, which really doesn't matter and can be summed up in you meet the first people from the organ from Organization Thirteen, which you don't know anything about. They can they uh, occasionally refer to the organization that they're a part of, but they never call it Organization Thirteen. They all wear these uniform black coats. They all have different personalities, and you basically go through, you, you go into this castle called Castle Oblivion, and at the beginning, the French diplomat himself, Marluxia, is like, oh, this castle is special. It takes away all your memories, and then um, you have to get your memories back by using these cards, because that's important somehow. And in, uh, in the original Chain of Memories, which is on the Game Boy, that mechanic works. Because the Game Boy has very limited controls, and using the cards is very good. But then when they ported it to P PlayStation, it was garbage. Because nobody likes the card system for the PlayStation 1. Because why on earth am I dependent on cards to swing my bloody sword? <laughs> anyway. Yeah, and, uh, and also, so basically Chain of Memories is split off into you play Sora, you go through a path, you fucking uh, walk into a sleeping pod, uh, and then you play as Riku, you go through a path, and then you turn into Zemnis for some reason, or, or Ansem for some reason. At the you end. turn into Ansem. A so so Riku's it. thing is fighting against <laughs> Copy Riku, which is a clone of Riku made by the organization. Which, which looks guess, exactly like reasons, evil Riku that you fought exactly in the first like, game. Yeah, and so you're basically just fighting your dark half, and then at the end you accept your dark half, which is what turns you into Ansem. Um, Sora, the, the only important piece of story that you skipped over was, part of this whole thing is that the organization is forcing Namine, who is the no? Who who will we'll learn about nobodies in the next game? Bear with me. She's the nobody of Kyrie from Ky from when Sora stabbed himself with the the key, the one keyblade, which made a heartless of Sora and a and a nobody of Sora, and somehow made a nobody of Kyrie at the same time. I don't fucking know. It don't make much sense. But because of this, the 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 nobody of Kyrie who has emotions, which is not normal for a nobody, by the way. 
Um, Just like Roxas. She, yeah, Roxas. again, also not normal for nobody. <sighs> None of that makes sense ever. Anyway, she is a, she is considered a witch with power over Sora, his memories, and those connected to him. So she's fucking with his memories the whole time to basically replace Kyrie and all his memories with Naminé. Because that's what the organization wants for some reason. I have no idea. And then when you get to the end, you beat the final Morganization dude with his giant peak rose sight. Morganization. And then, oh my god, yeah. Yeah. And then, yeah, uh, and then yeah. she's all like, I can fix you, but it's going to take a while and put you all in a coma. Is that okay? He's like, then yeah, we gotta I guess. Harsh too. And it came you know, to Hearts really 2 where suddenly stupid. playing a character named really Roxas really that we've quick, never met before. before. Really quick before we talk about Kingdom Hearts 2. The fucking okay, dumbest turn on my AC. Give me a sec. The mm-hmm. fucking dumbest thing in Kingdom Hearts Chain of Memory is literally fucking, I forgot something. Well, I guess it wasn't important. Otherwise, I wouldn't have, I would have remembered it. And they say that like six times, Goofy and yeah. Donald. Yeah. Like, because they're losing their memories because they're in Castle Oblivion. And of Castle course. Castle Oblivion makes you lose your memories. Fucking stupid shit. Yeah. Because Donald and Goofy not are not smart. Oh, yeah. I forgot anyway. something, but I guess it wasn't important. Otherwise, I would have remembered. Yeah. Oh, yeah. That Kingdom, is so dumb. Kingdom <laughs> Hearts 2. <laughs> so Kingdom Hearts 2. So, oh, my God. <laughs> so Kingdom Hearts 2, you wake up as Roxas. Nobody knows who the fuck Roxas is. Oh, actually, I'm skipping over a game. Sorry. It is the one game I actually genuinely haven't played. Three, five, eight over two days. All that is is telling you what's going on. Oh, man, I don't know how to sum it's, up this one. I'll, I'll sum it up the for organization. you. I'll, I'll sum it up for you. It's <laughs> it's Organization 13, the sitcom. Done. It really it really is. But the, the important things that happen in that game storyline-wise is there are 13 members of the organization. Roxas is one of them. Roxas is a nobody of Sora. They're using Roxas' ability to utilize the Keyblade because that's something that he could do because he's the nobody of a Keyblade wielder. And that's special because he's the only one in the organization who can do it. Um, Tell them make Zion. So it allows... So, so essentially what they're doing, the organization is having... We'll get there. Uh, the organization is having him kill Heartless because when you kill Heartless with a Keyblade, their hearts are released, and the organization can kind of shepherd those all into one place to make a giant heart-shaped moon, which they call Kingdom Hearts, which apparently will grant them their hearts so they can have emotions again. And it's the only time that I can look at a bad guy group in Kingdom Hearts and go, I kind of actually feel sorry for you people. Um, But then they make a clone of Sora except female because why not? And um, they do that because they think, oh, now we'll have two Keyblade wielders. But no, it's one Keyblade and it can only pick one wielder. And since both of them are Sora from the Keyblade's perspective, it hops between the two. And when when Shion, that's how you pronounce the name, actually, is using the Keyblade, Roxas can't. And when Roxas is using the Keyblade, Shion can't. And because Shion isn't actually a nobody, she has emotions. Oh, also, wait. Axel also has this emotions. Is three, this is whatever over two days? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Axel okay. also has emotions. And Roxas and Shion and Axel become super good friends. And um, and then Shion discovers that she's a puppet and goes fucking ape shit berserk or something. Because she meets Riku and Riku's like... You you don't deserve the Keyblade or something. I I'm really unclear on exactly what happens. Riku pre turning into Ansem, um, fights Shion and beats her. And there's some revelatory thing about Shion where Shion discovers she's basically just a puppet of the organization and she was never real in the first place. And she has a whole goddamn meltdown. And then Roxas has to fight her as like a final boss battle, which fucking sucks. Because he's fighting his best friend, basically. Um, and then and then Roxas is like, fuck the organization. I'm going to go do my own thing. And Axel is like, please don't. And I'm going to wield like, two keyblades, anyway. motherfucker. <laughs> Roxas is like, I'm, I'm going to do it again. And then, or I'm going to do it anyway. And then, uh, and then fucking um, Riku shows up and goes, great job, buddy. Blip. And knocks him the fuck out and takes him over to Ansem. Or Fucking. Diz, I should say. <laughs> who, who, Fucking by the way, Diz was also Diz was also introduced during um, uh, Chain of Memories, and uh, he he basically figures out what's going on, shows oh, up, and goes, a, "All right, I, I forgot. Well, I hate I the forgot Diz is just handsome with the mummy wraps on his face. Yeah, it's, that's yeah. what he. Is. We'll, we'll get there. So, so Diz is like, "All right, 
So uh, now that we've killed all the organization members here, Namine, you work for me and you're fixing the problem now. Also, okay. I hate you, and as soon as you're done, I'm killing you. Okay. Um, I'm not, by the way, that's not a joke. He literally is like, also, I hate you, and as soon as you're done, I'm killing you. Okay, I deserve it. By the way, that's also not a joke. <laughs> that's also not a joke, yep. Kingdom Hearts is fucking... Can you tell how emo this game is yet? Because <laughs> um, here's the thing. Kingdom Hearts was a little bit emo, but they're all like, not like... Kingdom Hearts, I'll so. put it this way. I'll put it this way. Kingdom because Hearts we can be a, an emo game. Because we can be a little a realistic. Tranquil. Kingdom Hearts was aimed at children. Kingdom Hearts 2 was aimed at the children that just grew up a couple years. Yeah. <laughs> yep. Uh-huh. And Kingdom Hearts 3 was aimed at confusing the shit out of everyone. Um, <laughs> Kingdom Hearts anyway. 3 was aimed at, can we finally pull this game out of development hell? Who knows? <laughs> they really didn't. I feel like they really did not accomplish the goal there. I don't think so. <laughs> oh, that's uh, why they don't taste good, because they're fucking dill pickle flavored. Just like your that dill pickle. That was random as shit. He's eating chips. They also, don't taste good because they're pickle flavor. I'm going to eat some. Uh, also, I just want to point out, Fried like, on, on what I can see on my screen, most of this podcast, I can see James, I can see me, and I can see the floating <laughs> head of Dave. Yeah, I just I want to point that, that out. You, you you can't see it. Uh, people watching this later, you can't see it because we don't record the cameras. But it's mostly just Dave's floating head over there. <laughs> Asia, I move over here and we get skull. It's it's cut. Yeah, his uh, Unus anus skull that he has hanging on his wall. Uh, because anyway, he's wearing like he's wearing like the green know, screen shirt. So it disappears a lot. So anyway, you you wake up as... Uh, well, okay, so he's brought to Diz. He's put into a digital computer realm. He wakes up at the beginning of Kingdom Hearts 2 with no memories of who he is or what's going on. All only memories he has is kind of sort of memories implanted in there about his friends in Twilight Town, which is a real town, but not this version of it. Um, hey, uh, so, so essentially... Real quick, why do you have two videos that are both titled Part 1, The Costume Quest Begins? Shit, I do? Uh-huh. I'm gonna go fix that. Mm -hmm. Okay, so anyway, uh, you wake up as Roxas, you don't know shit. Uh, here's the fun fact, by the way. Most people played Kingdom Hearts 2 first, because only, like, a few people even knew the game, the Game Boy title existed. Oh, and 3 5 mean, two days. You mean they played 2 and then Chain of Memories? Most people did, yes. Okay. Because they played RE Chain of Memories, which is the garbage version. I thought you meant they played 2 and then 1, and I was like, I don't think so. No. <laughs> so people are getting Kingdom Hearts 2 and going, who the fuck is Blondie? Mm -hmm. So um, basically he runs around doing random shit for his friends in the town, and they're trying to go see the beach. Uh, and later, uh, they Sansa! fail to get to go see the to get to go see the beach, uh -huh. and then when they go back outside, and Ansem asks Diz, um, "Why didn't you let them see the beach?" Diz is like, "Too much render. I didn't want to put more effort into the computer." I feel that honestly. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, that is the most fourth wall breaking bullshit I've ever seen. I like that is that, like that, that is the line, game developers sitting there going straight up. <laughs> Came from a developer, for sure. Yep. Yeah, definitely. Didn't feel like programming that part in. <laughs> anyway, there's this thing called the struggle, which is basically how you learn the combat mechanics of Kingdom Hearts 2. And in the middle of it, Axel shows up and is like, Roxas, my friend, I have to bring you back. I'm under orders. And you're like, who the fuck are you? <laughs> Good old Axel. You... Roxas is like, who the fuck are you? By the way, Axel is the one who's always like, got it memorized. Um, he's the redhead. Yeah, he's, he's a, that, that, redhead. that's another that's another annoying boss line, by the way, from Kingdom Hearts. Got it memorized. memorized. And then he changes it because, you know, Axel. Anyway, so, well, no, when he goes back to being Lee, which is the somebody version of Axel, instead of saying got it memorized, he says memorize this because memorize I guess. This. Yeah, whatever. So memorize this. I'm trying to think now. What? How do I explain this? I'm just kind of fading out of existence over there. Um. <laughs> oh, no. So so Roxas figures out he's in a computer simulation, wakes up, goes to the real world, runs around around the real Twilight Town, which is where the simulated Twilight Town existed, um, finds Sora in the basement of the mansion uh, that Diz was hanging out in, 
and realizes, it. And, and then he's like, oh, my summer vacation is over. And then basically he has to merge with Sora. Looks like so Sora my summer old. vacation is over. Yeah. Well, that was a whole thing inside the computers. They were on summer vacation. And they were trying to get all their shit done before summer vacation was over. Anyway. Wait, hold on. Which is, which is throwing a little bit anime high school garbage into when he Kingdom sees Hearts. the um, the fucking uh final fantasy one black mage is that in the computer or out of the computer in the computer but he does exist out of the computer as well vivi yeah vivi who is actually a final fantasy nine black mage by the way what um, who cares so he merges with sora and sora and donald and goofy wake up and they have a journal that's all blank with nothing in it except Thank Namine. And then they're all like, oh, I guess we forgot something, but it's not important. Moving on to the story. Um, which, I'm going to be honest, I'm drawing a bit of a blank on what happens in Kingdom Hearts 2 between that point and... Captain Jack Sparrow. That's what happens in Kingdom Hearts 2. <laughs> well, <three>. that's fair. <laughs> Captain Jack Sparrow does occur. Um, but it's essentially what I do remember is he has to go talk to Yen Sid. Uh, Yen Sid explains the concept of nobody. So the basic idea in the first game, they explain the concept of heartless. Now I'm going to explain why heartless and nobodies make no goddamn sense. Um, because the idea is that a heartless is a person who has lost their heart. But the way that works is the heart pops out of the person. And then the heart makes like a weird temporary darkness body for itself and becomes a heartless. A nobody is the body left behind by the heart, which has no heart, but is called a nobody because that makes sense. Yep. Yep. Because Kingdom Hearts was made in a vacuum (laughs) and Kingdom Hearts 2 was never intended. Um, So now he explains nobodies are kind of more powerful than heartless a little bit, maybe. And now you have to fight both of those and particular nobodies that are really powerful, actually got to keep their human forms, and they're literally called human form nobodies, and some pits and pieces of their personality. And they may appear to have emotion, but rest assured that they have no emotion, just the same as any other nobody. And then also go see the three fairies. They made new clothes for you. Um, Which is how you learn about drive forms, which is basically just transform into a more powerful version of yourself at the cost of temporarily murdering one of your teammates or both of them if you use master or final form or anti-form and uh you get a lot of murder power to destroy nobodies and i love how there's a temporary attached to that murder you murder them temporarily well i say that because basically you lose a party member for the duration of the use of a drive form so if you use valor form which is the strength form you lose access to goofy while you're in valor form but you still have donald if you use wisdom form, which is the magic form, you lose access to Donald, but still have access to Goofy. If you use master form, which is form three badassery, um, you lose both of them, but have incredibly powerful form to use. If you use final form, which is just master form, but upgraded to the tits, um, you what also lose Donald form? and Goofy. Huh? What about genie form? What genie form? The one where fucking... I don't know. I just, There's one where you fucking have genie and then he turns into fucking genie like, like nope sora turns into a fucking genie nope there's definitely not that I do not recall that being in kingdom hearts 2 I don't fucking it know. might be in a different kingdom hearts game but okay not so two. so y- y- you're saying you don't know what happens after uh like he goes to the fairies he gets clothes he goes to the fairies he gets clothes and again the game is largely just That's him awesome. running around the multiverse saving worlds and basically, well, remember how you had to lock the hearts of all the worlds before? Well, now you got to mm-hmm. go unlock them because you got to make pathways to go between worlds. And some of the worlds have important storyline shit that happens on them, but most of them are just go here, accomplish the goal, move the fuck on. And it's, don't it's mostly, go... It's, I'm going to be honest. It's mostly the Sora reunion tour. <laughs> Everyone's really like, he, he lands on like... Uh, he lands on like Hollow Bastion and they're like, oh my God, Sora, you've been missing for like six years or something uh and it's eventually good. eventually and he hops between, about, oh my god you've been missing enough times that they eventually land at disney castle this, there's this whole thing about um oh yeah you actually do go to disney castle and you go to the basement of disney castle to find a, a time warp that takes you back to before Biz- disney castle was built that's a whole fucking yeah, thing for some that reason. actually is an important story because maleficent finds that and says hey this goes back in time 
let's go back in time and make it so that this entire world never came to be the way it is now. And because it never came to be the way it is now, my problems all disappear, which is the only intelligent plan any villain made in this entire series. And it's made by the two biggest idiots. Yep. Yep. So, so basically you have to go back in time and save the world from being destroyed before it starts. Um, and then that basement area becomes like a place where you can go and fight a secret boss later. Um, anyway, again, you're mostly running around Sora Reunion Tour. At some point, you do get back to Hollow Bastion. You find out that it was originally named Radiant Garden, and it gets restored to Radiant Garden. You find out all about Ansem the Wise, who's the real Ansem, which Mickey explains about. And then he explains how Ansem <laughs> yeah, had a and, Yeah, because, uh, because, spoiler alert, Mickey just kind of flits in and out of the story in Kingdom yeah, Hearts 2. He, he just kind of yeah. shows up randomly here and there, like, hey, Sora, what are you doing? It's like, where the fuck have you been, bro? <laughs> doing shit and slaying bitches. I'm gonna go do some more. Bye. <laughs> then, uh, See you later. Uh, so anyway, uh... This is like your your exposition dump. So the exposition dump is, oh, the one you thought was Ansem isn't actually Ansem. It's the heartless of an individual named Xehanort. That might sound familiar to you, but when you were back in Kingdom Hearts 2, Xehanort was just one of the several pupils of Ansem the Wise. Ansem the Wise, or this particular pupil, learned about the heartless and started doing experiments on them and eventually accidentally turned himself and all the other pupils into heartless and nobodies. And... Ansem was like, you're all fucking dumb and stupid because Ansem had started that research, but then went, oh, this is fucked. We need to never touch this again, you know, lest I become death destroyer of worlds. And uh, Xehanort was like, nah, man, we got to do more. And then uh, something about a computer and putting shit into a computer and Tron exists there. And I don't remember the story. <laughs> yeah. That has oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. It, it, it's really, really squeezing those Disney IPs, man. Yeah. That's all yeah. it was. Just, like, just insert just Tron clear. for no there reason. There really is no story to Tron other than Door to Darkness is the 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 password to enter the computer it's and the computer just... has something to do with restoring people who have been turned into heartless and nobodies back to their original it's self. just a fan but service world it's not explain anything it's just a fan service world but in order to unlock all of that to make it it's work so that you can find the, the mcp <laughs> yeah end of line Dark. Um, yeah that too uh so anyway you learn all this backstory bullshit and then you find out that the nobody's created a world called like the world between worlds or something like that or no the world that never was and all the nobodies live there in a big castle what was that and, bullshit uh, what was that bullshit where they like move a painting and it's like ddd <laughs> yeah that that, that was when he explained oh, no. that's when he explained who ansem really was so then there's a whole so then that's when you find out in Kingdom Hearts 2 what the what the you find out that Maleficent and her heartless army is opposed to um Zemnis, Zemnis and his nobody army because Zemnis wants to create Kingdom Hearts to recruit to to give the nobodies their hearts back so that they can uh sort of so that they can have their emotions back. And Maleficent's like, uh that would get rid of all my heartless, which I kind of depend on to be an army. So no, go fuck yourself. And then dance, water, dance happens. And then um, you have to fight a bunch of people alongside Cloud and other Final Fantasy stuff. And there's a one one thousand. You have to literally kill a thousand, an army of one thousand heartless. There's a bunch of tournaments real. in the underworld for some reason where you fight your friends. Um, there's uh, uh... well, I mean that's that's just a thing in all the games. Yeah, the story for the underworld was basically like. Um, it's essentially the story of Hercules sacrificing himself for Meg. And then instead yeah. of the actual movie events happening, Sora fucking <laughs> Sora fucks with helps it. him in some yeah. way. And, and then Orin exists and uh, yeah, I, Orin whatever. From Final Orin. Fantasy 10, oh, he's and just there. Sort of exists. Orin, he's, he's there. just there. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> so here's the thing. I'm not doing a great job of explaining the story. No, no, I'm explaining like, some of it. No, but like so uh, much of the game is just like, but some shit point, happened. That one no point explanation. Was, that one point with Sir Orin is literally he's just there. Yeah, <laughs> they don't explain yeah. it. Or, Orin is just 
He's just, like, there's no story to that. He's he's just a champion that Hades was like, go kill Hercules, and that's it. That's this whole yeah. story. He he died, uh, and uh, and he somehow ended up in Disney hell. And Hades was like, okay, well, you're gonna go kill the Golden God for me. <laughs> and then he does, um, because <laughs> he's badass. But anyway, which, moving which, on. Which that is some bullshit. Because when you fight Hercules in the first game, he's such an asshole. He is legitimately invincible. He's so fucking difficult to until, beat. <laughs> until you throw invincibility nullifying barrels at him. And I and I refuse to believe that Sir Oren's fucking "I'm gonna drink sake and cause a tornado" is enough to beat Hercules. <laughs> yeah. Well, <laughs> according to the game, it is. Um, oh boy, where do we go? We fight the army of Heartless, we defeat them, and in so doing, we finally complete Kingdom Hearts for the Nobodies, which is not what we knew we were doing. And now the Nobodies are like, we have everything we need for our plan to succeed. And here's where I, here's where my disconnect happens. It's like, we have everything we need for our plan to succeed. Okay, what's your great evil plan? We will have our hearts so we can feel emotion again. And for some fucking reason, Mickey is like, Nope, not acceptable. Kill them. <laughs> and you're like, <laughs> all right. Not under my just they got okay. trick, bitch. I was like, I guess we're fighting the nobodies no, I'm now. Pretty right? sure, I'm pretty sure it was because like once they get their hearts back, they become way the fuck more powerful. And then all they want to do is murder people. It was something like that, or at least that's what Mickey Supposedly told you to believe. If they had their emotionally, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Anyway, and then, uh, and then so like, you and then like, the world that never was. Here's the gauntlet: fight the thirteen members of Organization Thirteen, and you get no, through like half of them and go. Members. I was gonna say you get through half of them and go. Mm, that's a little less than thirteen. What happened? Uh, and that's yeah. the part where they're like, "Oh yeah, fuck! You already killed the other ones back in Chain of Memories, but you don't remember that shit." So. <laughs> yeah that's really and funny. then they rescue Kyrie, and then riku hands Kyrie a keyblade which somehow makes her a keyblade wielder because that makes sense oh yeah um, and also, even though and for also, the rest of the games thus far including the previous game the prequel games you only get a keyblade if it chooses you yeah also uh also, he reveals he sh he shows up all like, "What's up? I'm Anthem," and then he reveals like, "Actually, I'm Riku." <laughs> yeah, and then Sora's like, "Oh, that's okay, buddy. If I touch you with my magic friendship power, you'll go back to being Riku." Yeah, that's and it pretty just much exactly how it happens. Works somehow. And then and then you fight Zemnis with lightsabers. <laughs> then you fight that's... yeah. Then you fight you know the thirteen phases of Zemnis. <laughs> yeah, so Xemnas so has enough phases to make up for the la lack of the other thirteen members. The That's one, the, the part where they're like, we really want to show off the power of our engine, so we're just gonna do a thing where we infinitely shoot lasers at you while we pan the camera around, and you have to just mash X for like five solid minutes. <laughs> Essentially, you fight and defeat Zem. <laughs> the important thing is you fight and defeat Xemnas and stop their plan and. Uh, and you're, and you're, you're, you're skipping like one very, person. very, you're skipping one very important thing, which is that the end of Kingdom Hearts 2 accurately predicted the fact that Star Wars would be acquired by Disney. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. That's yeah. true. Because Zemnis has a fucking lightsaber. <laughs> he has two fucking lightsabers that he yeah. summons out of the palms of his hands somehow. Um, Ansem destroys the heart moon. That is we're Hearts. talking about Christopher Lee Ansem, by the way, in case you weren't yes. following along on that bit. Ansem the Wise, hold on. Diz reveals that he is actually the original <laughs> Ansem at some point in the yes, game. Yes, I'm happens. very sorry. I am skipping a lot of stuff. That, that because happened I'm trying to back make... at uh, Beautiful Gardens or whatever. Yeah. So then he, t he makes a machine that destroys the heart-shaped moon but then it overloads and explodes and he dies. And by the way, no, he doesn't get a resurrection thing like every other fucking character in the game. He just dies. He's gone. He's never coming back. Why? Because Christopher Lee died. Sorry. Uh, not, not sorry. Not, not, saying but that. not when he died long after the end of that game. <laughs> he did. But that's why he never comes back as the character is because he died. Because the next game they made didn't have Diz slash Ansem as a character in it. And then they made Kingdom Hearts 3, which could have had Diz slash Ansem as a character in it. But Christopher Lee was dead by the time they finished it. So uh, anyway, 
Anyway, big explosive finale and Sora, Kairi, and Riku are back on Destiny Islands for some reason. They fall out of the sky. Yes, they fall out of the sky. Oh, they do, yes. They fall out (laughs) of the sky. They end up on Destiny Islands. Just like at the beginning of the fucking game. Again. (laughs) Um, Hold on. All the worlds are restored. Again. And then they find a little note in a bottle from Mickey, which they don't tell you what's in there. We need to close the door to darkness. So... (laughs) If you want to know what's on the note, you have to play RE Coded or Coded, which are also two games I haven't played yet. And hey, by the way, and, we've and just, just reached, so the end, we've reached the end of Kingdom Hearts 2 and we're at two hours of record time. Yeah, this is going to have to be multiple episodes if we want to talk about gameplay. And there's still Kingdom Hearts 3 <laughs> and all the other ones. Okay. Coded has nothing important <laughs> storyline wise. Story. It just tells you what the note says. It just tells you what the note says at the end of Kingdom Hearts 2. Oh, it's a God. whole ass fucking game just to do that. And essentially it's just like, oh, um, you need to do the plot of Kingdom Hearts 3, please. That's literally <laughs> what the note says, essentially. Um So then you go and you talk to Yen Sid at the beginning of Dream Drop Distance, and Yen Sid explains that there are seven sleeping worlds. And you have to go to these seven sleeping worlds and we don't have heartless anymore now we have dreams and nightmares to fight because that makes sense and uh i don't remember most of dream drop distance other than you go save the seven sleeping worlds and that's your mark of mastery exam and riku passes it and you don't and amongst that whole situation is the fact that xehanort shows up near the end and just goes ha 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 my actual plan all along was to have seven lights and 13 darknesses because that's suddenly important to the story for absolutely no reason we never mentioned it before quick math and uh, now i have 13 various xehanorts and, or well, i have 12 various xehanorts and i'm gonna turn you sora into xehanort number 13 prepare thyself and then you get like zorped by young xehanort who throws you onto one of the Organization 13 chairs, and you're just sort of there with... You're just sort of, like, dazed and confused and there and not doing anything. And then Riku shows up out of nowhere and is like, all right, well, I mean, not out of nowhere. You've been playing him the whole game, but this is the only storyline important thing I remember happening in Dream Dog Distance, which is uh, he shows up and basically goes, no, you won't, along with Axel, who has a Keyblade now for some reason. And, uh, and basically saves Sora and brings him back to Jensen's world, and Jensen's like, Riku, you pass. Sora, you fail. Also, you're fucking stupid. On to Kingdom Hearts 3. <laughs> and then, um... Kingdom Hearts 3 is a clusterfuck. I'm not even touching it. I'm done talking about story. <laughs> I was gonna say, like, this already sounded like we've hit the point where the cocaine kicked in real nasty. <laughs> yeah. yeah! Well, here's the thing. <laughs> I don't even know how to quantify coded and dream drop distance and three like i played three all the way through i didn't do that for dream drop distance so i'm kind of eh on the details i played all the details of three and i still have no fucking clue what's happening so sora have blade fight bad guy win game that's it <laughs> that's all i really know three made no goddamn sense at least with like birth by sleep and Chain of Memories, there was a congruent storyline that existed. It didn't really make sense, but we understood that there were that there were events happening that led to more events happening later. At this point, I don't fucking know what's happening anymore. And I played! I did the game! And I still don't know what's happening! Because then, like, at the end of the game, Ericus just shows up after dying. I'm not joking. Dying in Birth by Sleep. He's dead, and he has not existed for a single game since that part in the storyline. And then he's just sort of there. Like, you beat the ultimate end battle of Xehanort, and then Xehanort gets, like, turned into his little kid self, basically, like his 12-year-old edgy self. And he's like, but I swore darkness would win. And then suddenly Ericus is just there, and he's like, it's okay, bro. Light was always the way to go. Let's go be best friends. And they disappear. Into heaven. And it makes... No, I, I want to be clear. I want to be. I want to be clear about something. Fucking millions of people died. Worlds were fucking eaten and destroyed by evil. And <laughs> Xehanort just walks oh, yeah. into and fucking Xanort's heaven. Is just like, <laughs> is like, oh, but you know, he had a good heart. He could go to heaven now. <laughs> Nobody was happy with that. Nobody. Not a single I, person. I, also, also. Just real quick, I want to point out the fact that there's so many fucking, there's so many random Disney and Square Enix characters that could have solved this problem. 
many times. Oh, like, can we can also, we talk about can we talk about the fucking giant from Disney who could have just squashed everybody? <laughs> like, where the fuck was he? They never visited Jack and the Beanstalk. That's all. Actually, they do in Dream Drop Distance. <laughs> oh, do they? <laughs> Is that one yeah. of the Sleeping Worlds? Yeah. <laughs> And the giant makes a cameo for about five seconds. And I was gonna, never I was, heard from again. I was going to say, like, throw fucking Sephiroth in there, but they did. And he's not even a bad guy. He's just like, <laughs> he's just a, a no. mini boss. He's just a, he's, he's just, just a like... mid boss. Like, he's just a secret no, 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 mid no, boss. No, okay. Hold on. No, he's not a mid boss. He is in Kingdom Hearts 1 and Kingdom Hearts 2, the ultimate secret super boss of the game. And if you do not have up absolute fucking mastery of the mechanics of those games, you are not winning that fight. But he also don't do shit. <laughs> Outside but of just as, being a boss well, fight, he don't do no, shit. He, he essentially, he shows up and goes, I want a battle. Yeah, he's, he's like, like I'm here to recording. fight you, <laughs> and that's it. He uh, don't do shit besides. But here's, here's the funny thing too, right? So like, you talk to his Cloud at some point, you and Cloud's like, call hey, a meteor and if, destroy uh, a fucking planet. And he don't do shit. <laughs> just, just nuke the planet that never was. Kill all the nobodies. Get rid he of them. Literally turn back into people. literally the problem in like two seconds. By the way, this is how Disney gets away with murdering hundreds of thousands of people on thousands of worlds. Is, uh, oh, they all got turned into heartless and or nobodies. And when you kill the heartless and or nobodies, when you kill both the heartless and the nobody of a person, they just become the person they used to be again. So then nobody dies. They do some bullshit, yeah. Wait, what's another another fucking Square Enix character that... Fucking Gilgamesh, where was he? (laughs) Gilgamesh! You and know, you know, just and like you know, you know he would have around. He would have rocked up with like thirteen fucking keyblades. <laughs> yep, <laughs> Gilgamesh. Why, why wasn't he in the game? Gilgamesh is interesting. He would have made. He would have made such an awesome secret boss. Yeah. By the way, the title of this episode should be the tutorial to the Kingdom Hearts story, except Kingdom Hearts three, because three makes no goddamn sense. <laughs> Yeah, and in part two, we'll talk about the actual game part of the game. Yeah, next week. <laughs> this was me abridging the fuck yeah, out of ninety was, or out of eighty percent of the game. This was this was a speed run of Kingdom Hearts. Lore. <laughs> this is how fucking confusing it is. It's so bad. It's real bad. Oh lord. <laughs> you want to know something that is like it's like the ultimate. The ultimate fuck you, you just complicated your story too much. The story of fucking Nintendo's Squid Game thing. That Splatoon? I'm blanking the name. Splatoon. <laughs> makes more sense internally than Kingdom Hearts does. Because it is... Phoenix, you're supposed to be the Listen. masters of storytelling. Listen, I've never played any of the Splatoon games, and I can already tell you the story is just like, here's some people with... They shoot... Squid people, they shoot ink, and they have PvP tournaments. And they are afraid of octopus. Octopus people, yep. Yeah, who, I guess, eventually just integrate with their society, I guess. The octopus <laughs> people were evil, and now they're not. And also, there was... <laughs> See, this platoon actually goes so far as to be like, oh, also, there's an AI that exists from back when humans were on the planet. Oh, by the way, Splatoon is a post post apocalypse. Yeah. Oh and, and also if you want to go if you want to go story, if you want to go true, if you want to go it. true progression, this is what I know, right? Uh, having not played the games. If you want to go true progression, it's like Splatoon 1, uh octopus are bad guys, Splatoon 2. Actually, octopus aren't so bad, Splatoon 3. Everyone is now asexual. <laughs> and 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 completely like genderless. <laughs> Because, oh, by the God. way, that was their first... That's the first thing they said about Splatoon 3. Because Nintendo was tired of all the fucking R34. They're like, everyone's genderless now. <laughs> everyone's gender is just squid. <laughs> I think that's funny. Because originally, they led with a female character lead for the express purpose of having an IP with a female lead because most of their IPs have male leads and they wanted to give so- the world an IP with a female lead. And they worked really hard to spend a lot of time 
pushing the female character way harder than the male. And boy, that backfired because, man, they they have not met the Internet, have they? <laughs> they really don't understand the Internet. Very well. They were like, here's a female squid with tentacles. And the internet was like, oh boy, oh boy, it's Christmas. <laughs> They're like, by the way, they're 13. And the internet's like, we and the don't internet care. Was like, boy, oh boy, it's fucking Christmas. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> it got real bad. <laughs> no, hold on, hold on. I got a better one for that. Oh boy, oh boy, it's Christmas. By the way, they're all 14. And, uh, what? and, and what? <laughs> Yeah, Quiet. you peaked so badly it just muted. Sorry, sorry. And my birthday? Yeah. Oh, oh my god. Like, the internet is a fucked up place. <laughs> oh yeah, it is. They didn't oh give god, two shits. Christmas. And my birthday? <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> which 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 has which has notoriously led to Nintendo's uh copyright clamp going from a clamp to a fucking vice grip. <laughs> yep. they're like yeah. they're like okay yeah no if if it doesn't come out of our studio your ass is in court it i can't blame them yeah, i can't I really blame can't. them uh, no i really can't blame for them. them there's a there's a level of just like people warp distort and horribly destroy these beautiful things that they spend all this time and effort creating that is supposed to be a unifying game experience that everyone can enjoy regardless of age, mind you. regardless of gender, regardless of ideals, everyone can have fun with this. And then the internet goes and twists it into some eldritch amalgamate, horrifying garbage. And Nintendo is just like, all right, you know what? We are shooting everyone involved with that. Yeah, they're like, we have the flamethrower. We are going ham. <laughs> or the emperor. Kill all the Xenos. <laughs> yeah, so their solution is just... Burn the heretics. Everyone is now yep. a gender. Burn the heretics. So, yeah. Yeah, everyone is now a gender. Uh, there's no gender to them, uh, which is also going to backfire on them. I can already predict that, but... <laughs> oh, yeah, because then Splatoon is going to become the non-binary... Game of comfort. There's a better <laughs> game than Splatoon Two. Is there another? They one? are making Splatoon Three, and the first, oh, the first, the first announcement they made was that there's no more gender to the characters. Oh my god! They shouldn't have said <laughs> anything. They shouldn't have said anything. They should have just dropped it like that with the agender characters. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, and, and and we know we know that that's gonna happen because that's what happened with Undertale, right? Yeah. Oh, don't even. Stop. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just saying, your your I'm main just saying, character is agender, and they're like, oh, okay. The main character is not given a gender, and because. <clears throat> Largely because the character is a very, very, very young child. It has a very unclear body as to what gender it would be because it's he's like also fucking five. It's also intentionally ambiguous because it's supposed to be like, that's you. Yeah, it's supposed to be, you're supposed to be able to put your shoes in the character. And instead, that just happened to come out <clears throat> at the same time that the non-gender binary people were getting really up in arms about how they were it's, being treated. Uh, it's a gender non-binary, actually. Okay, a gender non-binary. I am just so very clear. I actually am genuinely sorry for not saying that correctly. Well, I don't give a shit. I'm just correcting you because other people give a shit. I'm trying to say I do give a shit because it was a very real problem. Okay, a gender. My, my thing is, I don't care what the fuck you are as long as you're not an asshole. I don't give a shit. Yeah, pretty much. Right? I don't really give a shit. Just don't, say, but don't be a dick. I'm just saying that th there we'll was a this rule. real problem that a, that a gender non-binary people no reason, basically. were being uh, persecuted, I guess would be the word. Uh, prejudiced against discriminated against that's the word i'm looking for oppressed and so so it. they were they were like really up in arms about that at the same time that undertale dropped with a main character who was a gender. yeah so they just latched onto that shit and made it theirs yeah uh, so and now you mess. cannot you cannot claim that frisk has a gender without um like in just incurring the wrath of the internet as a result and that is a negative thing that came out of a negative situation that was trying to make itself more positive. Shit. So I, all I'm saying is Nintendo saying everyone is now agendered non-binary is going to turn into that fiasco all over again. again. Yeah. But with yeah. Squid Kids this time. 
only <laughs> only this time uh only <laughs> only this time the difference being that if uh because nintendo has f- the fucking nintendo power gloves uh if they go this is our icon for being a gender nintendo goes no it ain't i'll see yeah, you in court <laughs> yep. that that is going to be the difference but they're going to try to do that and you can bet your butt that the internet will not allow you to gender any of those characters now. Even yeah, though half the cast of Splatoon 3 <laughs> existed in Splatoons 1 and 2, and With guess genders. what? Were gendered at that time. Yeah. So how did we get to this whole fucking thing. conversation? Yeah, I don't I don't know. We're at like two and a half hours now, so because I Splatoon think, uh, made more sense than, than, than Kingdom, Kingdom Hearts. Hearts. Yeah. <laughs> uh, oh, there it is. There's the fucking painting. Alright, well, this has been the tutorial gonna, on Kingdom Hearts gonna, part yeah. one tentatively. Uh, part <laughs> two will not will necessarily be next week, but it might. We, we don't play. know. Yet. We we hope maybe. Does anyone probably. else have? Does anyone else have another idea for a thing? I mean, I was for gonna say week? like VR yeah, games, yeah. but yeah, we could just t- finish the Kingdom Hearts. The only VR games I have any experience with is Vader oh, Immortal yeah, and. And Beat Saber. Oh, Vader yeah, Immortal. Beat Vader, Vader Immortal is like super good. Oh, it's so good. It, it is. is amazing. <laughs> yeah. Well, now yeah, I'm going to have to go get it so I can play it. They don't tell you about the time that that one random smuggler kicked the shit out of Vader. Like, they just really don't <laughs> mention that in the movies. <laughs> <laughs> that's. that's, that's uh, the, the canon of that is really up for debate, I guess. <laughs> Don't ask me. Ask fucking Disney, bro. Yeah, but uh, this ain't about that. This is this is about Kingdom Hearts, and honestly, or I'm fucking was. done with it for now. <laughs> until next week. Oh my god, it's yeah. so tiring to try to go through. Kingdom it Hearts. really. You can look up videos on the internet, like Kingdom Hearts story explained, and they will start the video by saying nothing in this shit makes sense. So just bear with me, more or less. And it's, it's very thirteen hours long. <laughs> Yeah. Sure is. Yep. Look, Even as, the as a matter of fact, are like forty-five minutes in length. Let me, as a matter of fact, let me go look up. I just want to say we covered like a couple of games, and it's been two and a half hours. We covered most of them. The only game that I'm just straight up not talking about is three, because, like I said, I played the entirety of three. I one hundred percented three, and I still don't know what the fuck happened in that game. David. Kingdom Hearts full timeline back cover Kingdom Hearts 3 no commentary 8 hours and 13 minutes Jesus Christ this has been the tutorial on Kingdom Hearts if you learned something please let us know in the comments have a nice day God wanna, damn it. I, I, hang on. I want to take an <laughs> outro from one of my favorite channels really quick <laughs> yeah drop yeah, me we're going to play you guys for a second i'm sorry we're, we're sorry for everything we're yeah. sorry <laughs> <laughs> i'm not sorry <laughs> oh god everybody say goodbye now Hey, you guys remember when I was the one who never showed up? Yeah, everybody say <laughs> goodbye sounds now. sounds like something you should have said after we stopped recording. <laughs> We're still recording, so say goodbye, no, Ringo. No, that that was the point. Bye. <laughs> Bye. <laughs> Bye-bye. Bye-bye.